worries. I think we just lost Kara for a second. I like your nails, Allie. Oh, thank you. I was thinking real hard until I was like... Crunching? Brain crunching? Yeah, it, just, <laughs> it, it helps the brain process. Yeah, yeah. When you have, when you have the clicky nails to click them, it helps it all move a little faster. Did you get those done at a salon, or are they like the all the press on designs that are out these days. I got it done at a salon. Very cool. Um, my sister was in town and she wanted to get a pedicure. I was like, I don't want to get a pedicure. Um, <laughs> so I ended up getting my nails done instead. Nice. I think Discord is literally destroying my... I, I'm keeping it closed because that's twice now my computer froze once Discord was open. Oh no. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep it closed and just use my phone for any chat stuff. Gosh, you think you have it figured out by now? <laughs> so rude. Well, I just love the fact that it's such a real thing. It's like you don't have to change settings. They're there. They're the same. You don't. But it'll still them. fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like printers. It's like we're so good at technology, but we can't make the freaking printer. It always cracked me up too when like your printer could be hardwired to your computer and it would still like fuck up and then they decided that the best thing to do was start making printers like Bluetooth and wire, you know, wire yeah. driven as opposed to like hardwired. I would, I'm just like, mm. maybe my Wi-Fi printer that I got literally will not connect to my Wi-Fi. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so I have to connect to you anyway. <laughs> yeah. I fixed it. It's like, that was not the development we wanted. <laughs> oh, nice. Also, uh, I got a gift from the people that clean my house, and it's like <clears throat> special edition chocolate covered Oreos. These things are crack. <laughs> oh, those like, look, yeah. Like, those look it's dangerous. It's like really nice white fudge with the Oreo, and I'm like, I, I, I'm so glad those are not year round. <laughs> <laughs> you just go to Costco and stock up on them now. No, no, no. <laughs> I actually don't know if they're at Costco, but no oh. stocking up. Okay. Oh, Chara, your video looks great. If you were worried about that, it looks really good. good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, precariously balanced on a stack of pillows. Oh, that's good. Um, so let's see. <laughs> I'm, oh my gosh. <laughs> like in child, my childhood bedroom right now. So. Uh, okay, guys. So well, let me come back to so I can see that. All right. Uh, anyone want to give a recap of last time? Actually, I think it's just going to be you, Liza, if you want. Yep. Do you remember? Me? I do. I have notes. It's going to be kind of. I didn't write it up. That's, That's okay. Normally try to do, but uh, Ellie just ducked out again. Accidentally overturned it <laughs> yeah we should probably wait a second because yeah i'll give her, a her you, yeah they're mm. so is it really that i only missed one yeah okay yeah this is our 51st session okay wow hmm. Hmm. and i may <laughs> I, I may have taken some free reign with Rowan last last session, <laughs> <laughs> and and maybe it had her cause a little chaos. <laughs> but I feel like it's what she would have done. It would have, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I mean, you've known Rowan for years now. So. All right, go for All it. Right. So 
so last session we started off down in the like lower level of the um, Black Earth cults area. We had just finished fighting up all of those like orcs and that troll or ogre, whatever it was. Um, and so we took a minute. We were like, okay, we're gonna go back up and take the monk's body and rest and try to like, you know, interrogate her a little bit more. But as we started to do that, we noticed that there was somebody outside one of the other doors, and uh, we went to go like see who it was and then opened it up and it was a Duragar, so one of the um, like underground dwarves and um, he tried to flee um, and it kind of turned into chaos from there so Nathan with his super zoomy dash ran after him and managed to stop him um, before he alerted too much but then with that we ended up finding gosh what was it like a dozen hostages right it was like 12 or 15 people mm -hmm. in cages, most of whom were actually the um, delegation uh, that you were supposed to go uh, find originally. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So um, we were like, okay, well, now we actually really have to get out of here because we have to save all these people. So the plan was we were going to start sneaking them back upstairs and getting them out through that side door that we had found and had the key for originally. Um, as that happens, I think Nathan went off to continue, um, checking to make sure the Durogars, like, weren't going to come after us. And he was like, you know, I don't need help. I'll be fine. You guys keep going. But at some point we heard, like, his gun go off. And Rowan decides she's not going to leave him behind. <laughs> and of course runs in to go find him but it, it's like a maze down there so she kind of gets tangled up in her own little thing meanwhile nathan like circles back around and comes into the top and he's like okay i'm back we're good to go where's rowan and so then he has to go save rowan. that sounds absolutely <laughs> accurate yeah <laughs> um it was a pretty scary fight they fought what are what were like giant centipedes called gauzamites and their stinger thing actually like uh i don't know if i remember it like poisoned you or implanted you or something like that but it was bad and it could only be like properly healed with fire like cauterizing it um so that was creepy but we did eventually all make it out alive we all got upstairs um nina managed to kind of single-handedly hold off like i think it was three of the monks because I did my draconic spirit thing, my my big fifth level spell, and it just like blocked the whole hallway. So we all got out. We got all of the the um, captives out. We are back in our camp where we left the horses. We did have a long rest. Um, and let's see, we met Maria Emmeline, right? That was the red haired with the long scar, the tattoo. Um, <clears throat> you say Maria Emmeline? Maria Emmeline, yeah. Oh, she mentioned that there was one other person that had come through mm -hmm. and slayed some of the Duragard, our warrior friend. When we asked who that was, they described Durgan. <laughs> so, um, basically, Durgan was in there, warned all the delicates of the dangers, da 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 da. So, yeah, we're back at camp. Got to talk about that and then figure out our next plan because what's her face did get away. The some original big monk we fought, Helena. Uh, <clears throat> the Helena. Oh. So is he good? Is he bad yet again? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you guys did save about seventeen commoners. Um, one of them was a part of the delegation, the original delegation, um, and their name was Brulden Thut. Terrible name. Only because it's hard for me to say it. Uh, Brulden Thut uh, is, let's see. Dwarven. Uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I was trying to see if they had any more information. No. Uh, older. Yeah, the only other thing I have is... Oh, go ahead. No, you, you go. 
I was going to say, I just have a, the Maria Emmeline, I think was one you might have come up with on the fly, mm -hmm. but she told us about the matron mother, like her tattoo was that, mm -hmm. and that they were escaping the Underdark. So that's yep. where the majority of these other ones came from. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, did you say that it was Rowan that got the poison from the group? I think it was actually Nathan a bunch of times. Did Rowan get hit by a stinger? Yeah, she did. You guys both did. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, Nathan and Rowan both did. Um, both of you had things bursting from within. Uh, and you guys managed to cauterize all of it, though, and able to get out. It was not fun. <laughs> it hurt. It was gross. But you all managed to make it out, and Nina, I think you took down, like, five on your way out. I'm pretty sure. Was it five? Yeah, and about five. Poisoned? No, not oh. anymore. No, you guys were, it, it wasn't, it was poison kind of while you were, had it in you, but once those were killed, it, it was fine. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, Nathan was the only one to suffer, like, a lingering injury, which mm -hmm. ended up being a sprained wrist, which we also, like, fixed right. with that. Yeah. Check, so. And, and was, yeah. Poor Liam was, like, running up and downstairs because he was like, I should be helping my sister with all these people. And then Nina was like, make sure they don't die. <laughs> <laughs> so then he went back downstairs. Then a big bug came <laughs> through and he's like, nope, not going to do this. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, okay. So you guys do find yourself back at the camp. Um, it was a bit of a harrowing trip, but you made it there. You had some discussions, did some healing, um, did some long rests, chatting, and then medicine checks to help Nathan's wrist, which healed surprisingly much quicker than um, probably should have. But <clears throat> you guys awake the next morning um all the commoners are kind of one by one also slowly waking up uh, breathing in fresh air the first time in a long time and just reveling in the morning sunlight that's starting to creep in from above um and as you start to kind of take in these commoners a bit more now that you're just kind of sitting and it's daytime again, you, most of them look gaunt, you know, malnourished, they're dirty, uh, just they look like they've been down there for a long time. And um, although some of them do look like they are used to that type of environment. <clears throat> Uh, in particular, Maria, who, which you did describe, uh, red hair cropped close and like a pixie cut, blue eyes, long scar down one side of her face. Uh, she's petite, kind of build, 5'3", uh, has like this fading tattoo around her neck. Um, and she's the first to kind of come over to the group and... So, um, what's, is there a plan? Should we just part ways? I, I, I don't know what you all plan to do. I don't think it's safe for us to stay here. No, probably not. Um, it would be a good idea for you guys to get to a town nearby uh, and further out if you can. Um, hmm. I kind of like look to you guys thoughts on letting them use the horses to kind of carry the wounded and then when we're done here we can walk back to Westbridge. I mean we only grabbed the horses for convenience sake but this seems like it'd be the better solution to their traveling needs. Some of them couldn't walk on their own. Some of them were just too weak and everything, so. 
Were I don't know. Adults? Were there any kids? Uh, no kids. They all look mostly of adult ages. Can I do a quick, um, like, I took the first maybe two watches, maybe even more, just while uh, the group who mostly got slammed was recovering. Can I do, like, an insight check on all of the prisoners and make sure we don't have any, like, plants from the cults in here? Mm -hmm. I mean, I assume that they wouldn't be that good and that the other prisoners would give in, but you never know with the sky's self or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a three on the die, so it's for an eight. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, you you kind of go from group to little group, um, just checking on them, uh, doing some light chatting. Uh, <clears throat> but then Nina remembers she's got horns sprouting from her head with some slight flames. <laughs> long fingers, black stuff coming off of them, and she's not finding their opening up perhaps as much as she yeah. thought they would. That's fair. I kind of leave them with the rabbit that I assume we all like went hunting for to provide if we don't have enough food for everyone and mm -hmm. just go back. But um, Yeah, I don't know. I think we should maybe get them out of here and then we can... I had this idea of going back to talk to Renwick, the lich that was inside. Maybe we can make a deal with him to get some more information and level the playing grounds a little bit. Do you think he'll give you straight answers? No. Well, I think he's that way because he wants something and if we can maybe aid in that goal a little bit he has no reason to lie to us he's just withholding right now because he wants to stay out of it but maybe if he asks for blood I ain't giving it I'm kind of getting tired of donating blood well that's fair Although, yesterday's bloodshed could have been saved if you had just trusted Nathan to begin with. It wasn't because I didn't, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, yes, I, I think giving them the horses would be great because, yeah, there's too many, there's too many injured here. They need them more than we do. But Maybe give them directions to Red Larch? Red Larch is closer, right? It'll still be days of travel. I, the only concern that I have for a group of injured people and putting them on the horses is that they're just going to be a bigger target for any passing groups that go by. Um, we can send them off with the horses, but I mean, they were literally just kidnapped and held hostage. There's no way the cult's not on high alert after all of that. You think we should take a break then? Go back with them? Escort them? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not against it. We kind of got our asses kicked down there by those centipedes, so... Well, you guys got your asses kicked by the centipedes. Chara helped me with the, the people on the stairs, so Chara and I are looking fine. We took no damage. We look great. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean as blood squirting out? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really do any true damage to their strength, I would say. It's not like they we did a blow that giving them time to recoup is not already an option they can do. And it might not be such a bad idea to see what sort of things stir. I mean, I did masquerade as someone from the fire cult, and I don't know that she believed me. So. I 
I know I've always been rum faced gross into it, but I don't feel like it's right this time. Okay. Well, how about this? I can use this, and I reach into my bag and pull out the little raven figurine that three left me. I can use this as an animal messenger spell and send it to Renwick and just let him know that we might be interested in talking. And he can use it to send it back. And in the meantime, we can escort them to wherever we think is best and then plan from there. I'd agree with that plan. Okay. Uh, so I will activate my Silver Raven Figurine of Wonders power. Uh, it can become a raven for up to 12 hours. When in that raven form, the figurine allows me to cast Animal Messenger spell on it at will. Um, and basically, you know, has a speed of 60 feet, can, that spell I think lasts 24 hours, so it can, it has like that long to, to do its thing. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess it's only 12, because that's how long the figuring can stay. <clears throat> so I will, I will cast that and then say, um, I don't know. Uh, Renwick, it's those nosy travelers you ran into, or who burst in on your study. We have a proposition for you and would like to meet outside of the temple or telepathically, if you're interested. And unless anyone else wants to contribute to that, I would like to send it off. Okay. I think you got it. All right, so. There is uh, something I think I can do to maybe help this. I can't believe I'm good enough, about to agree with Nathan, but. We have a lot more people in our group, so how do you guys feel about duck for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of habitat are we in? Forest or mountain? Uh, probably more mountain type. It's canyon-like. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely morning, so you would definitely... <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I reach up, reach up and touch the edge of the crown. I'm like, well, let's see what happens this morning. As I shoot Nathan a glance, and he just kind of oh, well. leans back, crosses his arms, looking pleased. <laughs> Eleven ducks. All right, the. Individual parties are kind of, you know, starting to gather themselves because they have nothing with them. Um, but helping each other up and as you guys are kind of dusting each, you know, the dirt off of you and everything and uh, passing water around, you hear distant sounds of a flying bee cresting over the canyon side and it goes past before slowly coming down and back around <clears throat> as multiple quacking ducks land and immediately line up and come behind you. All looking up at you. Some are pecking at the ground. Majority of these ducks are looking up at you. So, are we going to do this all at once? Oh, or... gonna have to. <laughs> I'm not very hungry. 
You have a fireball on you. Uh. <laughs> no, I can. Uh. Well, that was quite impressive. Uh, Maria would say as she kind of pushes everyone else, kind of guides them back a little bit. I mean, I can literally burning hands them. They're all on a 15 foot cone like that. <laughs> Rose duck first thing in the mm -hmm. morning. <laughs> um. Yeah, but you need to like defeather them to do all that, or is it? I mean, it burn it away. It's definitely not the best way to do it. But who else? We don't have like eleven crossbows. Even Nathan's not that fast shooting. <laughs> well, well yeah, I was thinking about using a sword and beheading them, but yeah. Oh, I mean, well, do any of you have too. any hand axes? Maybe we're uh i have a dagger i think the burning hands because was it that way we uh have it cooked and ready to go because starting a fire and cooking each individual duck is going to take freaking forever so this ain't going to be pretty please everyone turn around <laughs> <laughs> make it quick burden that and uh maria kind of direct everyone to look or turn around and then Maria kind of turns Burled and That, uh, but Burled and That doesn't even move. She stands there and crosses her arms, too, and just watches. Okay. She's like, all right. <laughs> I will use that first level spell slot then. It's 3d6. I'm assuming that's enough to take out some ducks, right? Depends or on how much. That. You could roll three ones. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I I got uh two fours and a six. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All of you feel a gust of heat uh and flame behind you as you hear a roaring sound almost <laughs> No, that's that's not appropriate. So almost <laughs> just <laughs> Sorry. Uh and you start to smell the burning of feathers and then that once that acrid smell starts to go you start to smell a nicer smell a savory smell um and you turn and look back and you see <laughs> Levin perfectly Standing ducks, legs just there, and they're just cooked bodies. The uh, comical, like yeah, totally <laughs> Looney Tunes. Like some of them still have their wings out, but there's just nothing on them anymore, and they're just perfectly cooked. <laughs> because why not? It's, it's a fun image. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, and. Breakfast is good. And then at that point, I will take my sword, or not even my sword. I think I do have it. Yeah, I have a hand axe, and we'll start taking the wings off and stuff, and making them more presentable, mm -hmm. cutting off um, slabs and stuff. Yep. Yeah, a couple of the mm -hmm. um, commoners would also join in, accepting daggers from... Liam, who's got way more crap in his bags than I realized. And then uh, they also start helping prepare and handing out and eating hungrily. Um, yeah, you guys managed to feed, overfeed, and you actually have an abundance. 11 ducks is quite a, quite a lot. You've got 17 people, but these people also haven't been fed much, so they also can't consume as much as they probably would on the normal. So yeah, everyone's perfectly fed, and you guys decide to send them off. I think we're escorting them. I, so okay. I think we help the those who are most injured and can't walk themselves up onto the horses okay. that we have, and then we would begin leading the horses. And I think the goal is to go to Red Larch because it's closer, and there's 
uh, is it Lumira, Lumiria, um, the cleric there of the Church of All Faiths, or what? Uh, Lumer Lumera. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I it has. Yeah, Lemura. 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 Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. I was kind of freaking that I turned straight to the page that had her name on it. Man, <laughs> I would have to pull up my that red would large be my stuff. Suggestion. Yeah, I think that would be my suggestion, just because like it is the larger temple that we know of. Westbridge doesn't really have anything of that, unless we want the Church of uh, uh, Tala. Is that. Chara's deity now, right? <laughs> uh, Yala. <laughs> um, Yala. That's what it is, yeah. um, um, did you like talk to uh, any of these people the night before about kind of like where they're from? Just, just Maria, who mentioned that they were escaping the Underdark, but we didn't hit everyone. So if you want to take some time to talk, <clears throat> feel free. I don't know if we necessarily need to play it out but my thought was that we would maybe ask a couple of them like yeah and you do so that we kind of know the better yeah location or who wants to go their own way and you kind of gather so and i may have said this wrong maria is actually the only one from the underdark um okay there's quite a few that are just from the surrounding area um one of them is uh, Thea Laughingsteel. Uh, she is a 75 year old female. She has a bald head, brown eyes. She stands about four foot ten, tall, has a muscular build. Um, and in talking to her, you know, you, you gather odd facts about people. She has an allergy to crabs. Weirdly, she decided to share. Uh, Kevin Ashglad is another one kelvin ashglad uh, who you learned about a 32 year old male pickpocket uh, he has short wavy brown auburn hair green eyes smooth pink skin he's about five foot five skinny build and he's a pipe smoker a lot of this is stuff you probably don't need but another one's leo frick watlow Who's a 26 year old fisherman? Um, you learn he is actually from. Uh, I gotta look at my map because I forgot what it's called. <clears throat> He's from uh, Womford area, which you guys have visited before. And then you've got Berla Hilles, a 50-year-old 50, 50 female miller. Athletic build, soft features. But yeah, generally you kind of just learn little bits and pieces and you get the idea a lot of these people are just got caught up in this. Um, whether they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, or some of them have loved ones that were also taken with them and were taken below. Um, none of them know where below is. They just know there were caverns and such that continued further deeper into the... Um, the mines that I'm suddenly forgetting what they're called. The Dwarven Mines. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yeah, uh, some of them what was Sorry, that? Go ahead. I was just going to ask for the abduction part. Uh, was it kind of all in the same manner of like there was a covered wagon that you were just grabbed and thrown in? Or anything, um, or is it kind of different ways? Of very production? random, sporadic. Uh, all of them seem to have kind of different stories. Some of them were taken from their homes. Some happen to be traveling. Um, all of them are from the surrounding areas, though. 
uh, whether it be Belliard, um, Huntington Axe, Summit Hall, Red Larch, like they're they're kind of a spread all throughout the Deserin Valley. Um, yeah, there's several of them that tearfully tell you they lost their their loved ones were taken further, and um, they don't know what happened to them, but they were fairly certain that they were used as a threat left them behind so that the ones taken below would do what they wanted and are asking for. Um, <clears throat> and yeah. I would love as they like kind of mention, do we have a physical map? Like does our group travel with a printed map of the area? I thought you guys. I can't remember. I thought we got one in Westbridge. Did we? I feel I like remember if you. That was a flick thing or it was like at the like oh adventure store or whatever. Um, it wasn't like super detailed. Yeah, enough you're to... right. It was like a trifold style. Yeah. yeah, it was very vague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like major trade route sort of mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Um, I would love to, like, while we're walking then, Nina's kind of, like, keeping her distance from folks just because she is a little off-settling, but she's, like, listening in on things. Um, we know where the Howling Hatred was. We know where the Crashing Wave was, or is, where all these are. And we know where the Black Earth is now. I would like to try and, like, approximate where those are and see if there's any sort of, like, rhyme or reason to it. Is there an equidistant between them? Is there, like, a nexus point where, like, if I draw some lines that connect them that seem to line up? Like, I'm all, I'm doing this very haphazardly, and I, if, if you want me to wait until we make it to, like, a tavern, I can do that, too. I just wanted to say something before I forgot. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to figure out what I just did to the map. <laughs> <laughs> we got parchment now. Yeah, I don't know. Can you... Does it let you control Z? Undo. All it does is bring back the stupid yeah. fucking drawing that keeps going back. <laughs> I can't I keep clearing it. I put I was trying to put the map to the back so that I could reveal some of these other things, but I seem to have Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to reveal some of these pieces on Did I throw you on the map? I did. I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, we can see the map. Okay. So I'm attempting to bring some of these things to the forefront so that you can actually see some of these spots. Um, While you're doing that, quick question. Yeah. Did we ask these people at any point why they were hostages or like how they became hostages that's what uh rowan was just going over with them yeah oh perfect okay i was like that i was just making sure i didn't miss it yeah no no that was it i think we got like they're kind of they were randomly and sporadically abducted no kind of similar way or anything like that they're kind of from all over the place but it is all still local so um Belliard, Red Larch, that sort of thing. Kind of all these different towns that we know about. Um, some of them had family members that were also kidnapped. Uh, but used as, like, leverage to take them down below. Because I think that was the other point I forgot to include in the recap. Um, the gnomes, or the Duragar, the dwarves, were taking individuals, like these prisoners, down deeper into the caverns. Uh, and doing something with them. We don't know what, but there is some sort of entrance to the Underdark down there. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. And some of these should be showing up now. I love when you try to see where we've been. Yeah, that's the one I'm trying to do is show the ones yeah, where you guys have. Look at all that travel. <laughs> Map. We've been here. Wow, the Sacred Stone Monastery and Riverguard Keep are real close. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, and then there's this one. I love this. I love seeing the little things pop up. Pop up. Uh, here's this. else have you guys been? Uh, oh, well, you've been to Ruindreth Manor. Map. Map. This is something I should have done before. Yartar beforehand. was the other big city. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to <laughs> cause us. To... No, no, sorry, this is something I should have done beforehand. I didn't even think about it. You remove River Guard Keep to the silly place. <laughs> All right. That looks a little better. Oh, you know what? You guys nice. took the large, did you? Nah. Okay. So that's where your map is at the moment. Okay. I can't get any rhyme or reason out of that right now. Those seem not, those three X's seem not so specific. So, uh, well, if you we draw a line, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a really good idea. I like where your head's at. <laughs> and it, there, was a joke. there was a joke that came up way back in the <laughs> Where I questioned uh, the symbols on the map. Do you remember that? Yeah. I was like, oh, the symbols are the same as what we found inside the this one cave. And you're like, it has no... <laughs> yeah, that was, that was when I realized they had early on thrown one of the main symbols out there and just put it on the freaking map for everyone to see. I was like... <laughs> I didn't realize it was on there. You friggin' pointed it out. I was like, what the heck are they doing? No, those aren't important. <laughs> okay. I do a lot of puzzles, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, but yeah, if we're leaving the Sacred Stone Monastery, we would head west towards Red Larch. Um... Passing by Feathergale Spire. Well, we don't necessarily want to go directly near the Feathergale Spire because that isn't that where those giant like tornado creatures are. In the we defeated a Reese though, right? Did we? Yeah, I don't remember defeating them. No, we defeated Arisi. We actually haven't defeated the wave, the crushing wave yet. Garb, or no, not, is it Garb? Oh, yeah, no, but I mean, in the canyon around the spire. Oh. Were tornado. I assume those were attached to Arisi. Could be. I don't, I don't. But you know. could be right. We can be careful. Let's just not climb yeah. any high hills because we don't need to fall down again. <sighs> I don't know. How else are you get a new one? 
It's all good. You have fly. <laughs> all right. So you yeah, guys head across the um, the valley, basically. Uh, you come out of the canyon area, cross along the edge of it, which you're very familiar with at this point. Um, and yeah, you guys wind up. It, it takes, actually, that's a good point, Megan. Ba, ba, ba. Oh no, you are not there. You're here. Ba, ba. Thirty-two miles. That doesn't seem like much. All right, we'll say with all the people with you, it's probably going to take two days because you guys have to take a slower pace, um, even with the horses, oh. horses, horses and such. Um, <laughs> but you guys eventually okay, we got our duck in the bag. Yeah, <laughs> got ducks. You got plenty of food. Um, and in those two days, does uh, Nina get a response at all? telepathically oh good point yes or does my raven return empty-handed <laughs> yeah so your raven which i have to remember what this thing looks like because i feel like it's just it's a little stone thing and then it okay yeah i mean it's a raven it's black <laughs> It's a little raven. Uh, it's... As you guys are sitting one night, you hear a little flutter. And... Nina, just behind you, you hear a, two little feet kind of jumping and coming towards you. And you look down, and this little raven's head just kind of looks up at you. And, and it just kind of does little squeaks before it uh, flaps and flutters onto your leg and it kind of burrows down a little bit and looks up at you and as you look at it you feel a connection kind of occur with the dark eyes and you hear inside of your head interesting I have not left the sacred stone monastery in years. But call me curious. And he is going to give a brief description on a path leading from the stone monastery and from there how to get to a meeting spot basically okay um i assume that it's also like there's some way what he'll know that when we get there we can summon him or something um or i can find someone to cast sending like is there any like meet me in there two days time sort of vibe or uh, yeah, he really didn't give a uh, time. Okay. But you okay. also recall, oh, yeah, oh. liches are pretty, especially some of them that are older. It, 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 yeah, older creatures, like, time just is not as important. <laughs> Aside from right. retaining it. Okay. Do any of us have sending? I think we were using Antony for that, wasn't it? We're, we're... And, 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 mm -hmm. and, okay. Anyway, uh, um. I have to open up my NPCs thing here. <laughs> Antono, Antono. Antono, yeah. Okay. Um. I will relay that message and let them know that Runwick 
is interested and if we want to we can perhaps arrive there you know it'll be like i assume he'll know liches are nuts when it comes to like time and communication so either we can get there and i can send the raven again um that way we're doing it in our own time but he's interested definitely didn't seem to be in a hurry before that's good though lets us craft our requests or our what we want what we're willing to do sort of thing yeah do we even know what we want any intelligence on what the fuck they're doing below that temple would be nice. Uh, yeah, Bruden thought at one point, like hearing this, she kind of kicks the horse that you've given her and that she's on. She kind of pushes forward a bit, comes up beside you as you're walking and just kind of sighs, hands crossed over on the... Oh, man. <laughs> so not a cowgirl. Thank you. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. And just kind of leans down a bit. I don't know if anyone knows what they're doing down there, but... They're preparing something. I, we'd hear a lot of things going back and forth, but the majority of it was just about the different cults and trying to get power and gaining members, growing. But every now and then you'd hear a follower or two mention something about the Will of the eye. Never heard of it myself, and I'm kind of one that studies a lot, so. <laughs> but as for what they they're talk doing. about that will of the eye in summoning manner. more of just carrying out their will. Sometimes it was so vague. I wish we had more information for you, but it I've never heard of an eye leading a cult, much less all of them. The way they talked about it, I mean, there's no reason for these different cults to get along. They usually don't, but they are. And that's unusual. If I had to guess, this eye, Elder Eye, that's what it was, Elder Eye. I think it's leading all of them. Did they make it seem like the Elder Eye was communicating to them in person or telepathically? Like, did they seem like they were in its presence when you heard it? No. No, I... We got the idea that they... Some of them could speak to it. Uh, specifically the, the princes. They were getting messages. They would always just say from below. So I assume somewhere lower in the Basilmer mines and tunnels.
do you happen to ever hear them say anything about shards or glass? Oh, man, I put all my dice up. Hold on. Let me do a stupid roll. Uh... No, not particular. Um, I know they were gathering things. Looking for something. I, I don't recall anything about crystals, you said? Glass, gems, Glass gems. crystals. Shards of pieces. I mean, I recall them saying they were... <laughs> looking for something things and the princes were sending out parties small groups to go look for them all over but i never really got what it was they were looking for Sounds like a good time to intercept one of those groups. I'm pretty sure it'd be hard to find them though. I mean, you think they're gonna walk around in their cult uniform? Maybe if we stuck out, stuck out, staked out, hung out, <laughs> around one of the cults, we'd probably see them entering or you know, exiting or coming back. I mean, there's always groups of them. More reconnaissance. Going from the surface temples and then further into the temples below. What is this underdark like? Burn Broden that looks at you for a moment and then kind of looks back eyeing uh, Maria who uh, noticing the looks kind of pulls her shirt a little closer and then skips a little bit further up to catch up with you and What's that? Kind of curious if you could tell a little bit about this Underdark. I have a strange suspicion we may have to travel down there at some point. I mean, the Underdark is huge. It's as big as the world above. Why would you need to go down there? It's dangerous. Oh, well, we tend to like danger. Clearly. Nina chuckles. Well, you certainly look like the kind of group that would follow your friend into hell, so... Who am I to question? But if you really want to know honest truth, there's a reason I was trying to leave the Underdark. It's... not for the faint of heart. There are societies down there, for sure. I mean, whole cities. But it can also be pretty unkind. When you were in Nezabarazin, did you... 
<laughs> Sorry, what was that? Did you hear any? <laughs> did you hear anything about the elder eye? You mentioned the matron mother, but was there any mention of the elder eye? I've never heard of it. There's a good chance Matron Mother might have. I mean, really. She's been around for a long time. I imagine anyone that's been around for a long time would probably have some idea. But Roden that there. I mean, she's a scholar. Studies history. If she doesn't know. Sounds like something that's been buried. You'd probably have to go back to someone pretty fucking old. I apologize. We've stirred up in you. Oh, not at all. You guys rescued us out of a shithole. We were going to die down there. So thank you. You can ask as many questions as you like. And it doesn't hurt. It's just words. was very kind of you. <laughs> you guys continue on, eventually catching the larch path, which is the path that cuts through the north and through the summer hills. Um, and you start heading south. And... Unless, did you guys have anything else you wanted to discuss with the villagers at all? Or the commoners? I don't think so. Not for me. All right. No. Oh, man. I'm having to pull out some old stuff. You guys haven't been to Red Larch in a while. I know, we like breezed past it and aren't we down here? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we like barely saw the reconstruction happening. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh boy, okay. So, <laughs> you guys see over as you crest the hill, because once you come out of the canyons, it's just like these rolling hills. Uh, and you see in the distance the tall trees, the red larch trees, um, and you see the welcomed familiar sight of a town that is still in the process of rebuilding. Um, a lot of the main buildings have been restored. Um, and it's funny as you start to come into the city you notice there's some differences whereas before a lot of the buildings were purely wood um, they have incorporated a lot of the quarry there and use a lot of the stone and marble um, which was previously always taken down to Waterdeep. Uh, that was their main sustenance, was the quarry and the wood. Um, but they've finally decided to use it to shore up their own buildings and walls and make Red Larch stronger. And you see, in particular, in the middle of town, along that main road where once was a large pit that they had started to cover up where you guys initially found the first signs of the cult activity 
you see they have laid stone cobble cobblestone um, and tightly fitted fresh and new and it's so interesting and such a change to this you know dirt road that used to be there and they've almost in the middle where that hole was they've made like a circular pattern uh, and made it like a central part of the town and kind of built the other buildings shored them up around it uh, and some of the people are starting to gather up some of them kind of looking at you doing double takes uh, you see a person now and then kind of run across inside to one of the places before you see a couple people come out into their porches to view and you see various smiles and nods towards you some people waving familiar faces and you guys come to oh my god Where's my cards? <laughs> the singing, swinging sword in. You see where you see Kalesa Urkel. Uh, immediately, like bursting through the doors and shoving people out of her way. And she sees all of you and she just smiles. I was wondering if you lot would ever come through again. Couldn't get rid of us that easily. That's all right. You can remain speechless. Get your asses in here right now. And she turns and she's like, claps her hands. All right. Drinks on the house. Just this once. And there's just a raise of cheers as she hustles oh. everyone back inside. Mm -hmm. But before we do, Kalissa, um, I think we got to get to the All Faith Temple. We have some folks who need help. Uh, gestures to the the group of people that are behind us coming with us. Um, brain check on the drinks. Ah, strugglers, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be welcome here. Uh, rescuees. We'll make places for him. Or is there, a, is there an infirmary or anything that may be better for us to take him to? Ah, uh, no, the All Face Chapel. They'll take care of him there. Don't you worry. Okay. Yeah. Imdar and Lamura. They'll take care of him. All right, you folks go on. Once you're feeling more healed and such, you come back here. There'll be rooms for each of you. Red Larch is nothing if not hosting now. And then she would kind of shuffle the rest of the patrons back inside and start offering drinks and everything to them as you guys start to make your way. Where's my Red Larch map? Let's do that. <laughs> ba, 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 it's been so long. Oh, look, the symbols. <laughs> oh, look at those <laughs> symbols. Uh, the oh. map that did it all. Yeah. Wait, Sorry, I gotta... Peeplick. I gotta take your old <laughs> character things off of here, too. You, you need to put a little more scars on all of us. Come and on, Nina. There's Flick. There's old Liam. There's three... All right, we're doing this just primarily so you can see what's before you. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, where is it? It is number one. So right here, all face chapel. So you guys wind up having to go back down. <laughs> you guys took the long way kind of through the alleys and stuff. But you come back down and make your way to the 
area of the All Face Chapel where you. God damn it, that's the wrong thing. Hold on. Well, well. Locations. There we go. You see a male human uh, with some perfectly placed uh, white in his beard, uh, dark hair kind of slicked back a bit, and he's just leaning uh, on like a rail, sees all of you and nods, kind of dusts his hands off and pushes open the door and greets all of you. And you would recognize this as Imdar uh, Ravander, which was the other human priest, um, the leader of the temple, basically. And he kind of guides everyone inside and starts leading others, um, those who need medical help, to one side. And after a few minutes, uh, you see Lemura come in through the back door where you know the garden court to be. And you see her close the doors kind of behind her. And she just kind of smiles for a minute before she kind of covers it and puts back on her air of priestliness and walks up to all of you. It is so good to see all of your faces, even the new ones. She kind of leans to the side, looking at Nathan and Chara. Yeah, it's been a trip. Um, this is Nathan and Chara. Hello. Uh, Lemura Ardarak. I'm a, a priestess, devotee of Sune. At your service. And you notice her eyes just kind of keep glancing towards you every few seconds, Nina. Uh, not giving away anything other, just, you know, kind of... I'm different. Little partake, yeah. <laughs> Since the last time she's seen me. <laughs> Quite a bit. <laughs> As we are standing here talking to her, how much of the chapel is still like some heavy triage is it for a lot of people healing or is it kind of more no it's it's been a couple weeks actually that's a good um, question yeah. let me jump back into our calendar here i don't remember when the last time you guys visited Oh, it's been over a month. At least, yeah. Yeah, since you, over, probably like almost like two months since you guys have been back to Red Larch. So, oh yeah. Gosh, it's only been two months. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like two years. I know. <laughs> but yeah, you, it's probably it seems like you guys have been traveling together a lot longer than you have. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, no, there's there's no more people just in here still healing from that. Um, if anything, there's probably more people in here doing actual temple-type stuff. Um, you know, people tend to gather and remember their face in the face of tragedies. And so there's more people kind of moving about the temple. And if you remember, the All Faith Temple is known throughout the lands as one of the few temples that has a shrine to all the known gods and even one unknown. So, like, they are just full of people coming in and out, um, some people from outside of Red Larch, uh, people passing through caravans and such, um, they're even starting to visit the temple more. 
So if anything, they've probably built out a new side area, expanded a bit with the new growth of the city. And yeah, there's definitely an area that they are currently setting aside to help uh, with the people that we're bringing in. Is the shrine to the unknown god visible from where we're standing? Yeah. Um, I want to just see if it has any similarities to anything that we're dealing with. Like anything that has to do with like eyes or mm -hmm. elements or anything like that. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah. you um, see the shrine and it's it's kind of off to the side um a lot of people tend to either pick a god or a shrine or they bounce between different ones depending on their needs um the unknown god you see that shrine just there's no depiction it's just a stone candle that is like a carved stone candle, but there's a flickering flame on it. And just a little plaque at the bottom that just says, to the unknown gods. Um, gotcha. So it's more just like, a, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Deities come and go all the, all the time. So this is our way of like, until you are named, you are yep. also welcome here. To okay. give respect to all the unknowns in whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like something that was forgotten. It's not anything like that. So, okay. Well, I guess it could be still be, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right. Are there any new statues? Yeah. You know, any, any, uh, you know, Yala statues hanging out. I'm just curious. Uh, you, you don't see any what looks to be specifically to Yala. You do see a couple that look like fertility ones. However, the names beneath them, yeah, they're, you don't get the idea that Yala has made it yet spread this far. So we're still working on it. It's yeah. only been like two weeks. So you know, yeah, we'll get there one day. <laughs> I'll shoot a glance over at Jara and see, just show it. And I know that she's looking to see if y'all is in there. <laughs> you do have like a whole night to spend making rumors. <laughs> <and making lessons. laughs> Give her ideas. Oh no. I'm going to get on that. Um. I would like to ask Lamura. Mm -hmm. I ask her if we can speak in somewhere private, or at least not necessarily like among other patrons. Uh, I trust the people we brought in, but I don't necessarily trust everyone else who might be in here, kind of coming and going. But um, I want to ask her about the uh, Elder Eye. Okay. As well. So when you kind of mention, is there anywhere we can talk? In private and she would uh, just kind of give a little nod uh, eyes kind of sliding to everyone else around and uh, follow me and she would turn and almost like glide just towards the back towards the garden area um, where she pushes open the door and kind of guides you all through uh, she would close the door and you come into a garden area um, where you see a very beautiful tended garden of trees and flowers and a path around like a very very English cottage type garden um, but for one area near the back where you see a um, dragonborn uh, standing back there and they stand a bit taller and uh, you notice them kind of push their tendrilled hair back a bit uh, straighten their robes before making their way forward uh, and they smile at you, Rowan. 
Well, I didn't know if I would ever see you again. I'm very pleased to see you. And Sora would reach forward and would just embrace you. Uh, I give a big hug back. Yeah. They like hold extra tight for a long moment before stepping back and just like kind of resting their hand on your face for a moment, kind of squinting at you oddly and then stepping back and smiling. You've seen a lot more than I have lately, it seems. A lot more. You definitely carry more burdens than you did before, which is saying something. I mean, I mean, heavy shoulders can take hmm. a lot. Yes, you can. Well, I'm not here for long. I just was tending to... She kind of looks back at the flower, uh, the plants that you see kind of growing towards the back that she had been standing near and recognizing it as the seeds that she had sprouted before. Um, from her personal bloodline um, and the purple flowers that are kind of sprouting off of them. They're growing well. Can't say my people have taken to it much, but I'm working on them. Maybe we can catch up later. She kind of eyes Lemura for a bit and the rest of your group. It's good to see you. You as well. God's be with you, Merlin Stormcrow. And she would walk out, give a nod to Lemura, who nods and smiles. And she would head out. And Lemura kind of turns to the rest of you and sighs. Before you dive into anything more. What the fuck is going on with you? She looks directly at you, Nina. <laughs> well, so I had a curse. We broke that curse. Mm -hmm. But in the process of breaking that curse, I found a bag of soul larvae and uh well when we had to fight um shit I forgot the dragon's name uh the don't even worry about it it's okay she would just <laughs> the dark lady uh we fought the shadow dragon of rune dreth Manor. um I didn't want my friends to die so I ate one and this was the result but I'm no longer cursed. I think this is just a thing. Like, it's just a new thing, but it's not a any bad consequences afterward type thing. This is after her true form. Who would have done <laughs> That's fair. That's a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it a is. So larvae. We have a couple more, but I don't want them anymore. Yes. Is there anything? Don't, don't consume any more of those. Can I give them to you? I assume you would know how to put them at peace. Yes. I will give her the remaining three that I have. She takes the bag gently. Um, takes in a deep breath before she undoes the tie and looks inside. And you notice as she's looking inside, you the second that thing opens, you can hear the yeah. the noises and you see her staring into this for a long moment before like just a tear comes down her face and she nods and 
ties it, tightens it closed again. Yes, I will take care of this. These souls deserve to be free. I didn't really fully understand what it was when I ate one. I just knew that it was going to give me the power I needed to keep my friends safe, so... It's okay. Um, be that as it may, we have yes. some other big concerns. Um, so, the cult that attacked here, we haven't had a chance to run into them yet, but we have since had a run-in with the Howling Hatred and the Black Earth and you might notice that Flick is no longer with us. Yes. Um, Nor three. They are. Three's with his family. Okay. Flick went off to be with her family and to do some research, but we actually got a letter that they got into some trouble. Uh... Doing some research I'm about sorry. the Elder Eye? The Elder Eye? Is it anything you've heard of? As far as we can ascertain, it's what is uniting the cults. It's all these people we brought, they were being held prisoner by the Black Earth. Used as sacrifices or something. They just kept saying that they were being led down below, and the below we kind of took to be like further into the Bessemer mines. The Elder Eye. I feel like it sounds familiar, but distant. Like something, like a forgotten child's tale or something. Um, yeah, can we pull out Flick's, le I've got it like mm -hmm. pulled open, but I would like pull it out of, or Rowan has mm -hmm. it, right? I believe I actually kept the letter. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I, can I, would, I would see if we could pull it up and just like let her read it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a long shot. Um, but I just know that with your unique talents, uh, maybe you would have heard something. She takes it and unrolls it and starts to read it. And you see kind of a, a sadness come over her. Um, and then curious look. Yes. Hmm. Elder Eye, the Herald. This sounds. I can't pin it. Chain one. You see her eyes kind of open a bit as she, you see her like mouthing the last part there about the chained one and she kind of rolls the note back up eyes distant and thought and then hands it back to you the elder evil eye or the chained one That I have heard. It's very old. Uh, I guess you could call him a god. From long ago. I, we are talking back back before we counted time. When it was just the primordials and the gods. He 
I used to be a god. If I remember correctly, he got a hold of a primordial spike. Spark, sorry. Primordial spark. And it corrupted him. If this truly is the chained one you speak of, you would know him better as the creator of the abyss. It was only by the powers of the great overseer I believe it's pronounced Ao. It's one of the few times he actually stepped in and intervened. And the great elder I was imprisoned and he became known from then on as the chained one apparently his prison lies somewhere called the void harrow which is almost a pocket realm of everything but in the way that the chained one prefers a place that he can undo everything to his wills As much as he is chained there, uh, as far as I know, he's always tried to find ways out. Because who stays within a prison? Not of their own making. If this is truly What you are pursuing, are you, are you under the belief that these cults are followers of this ancient being? Um, the rescuees that we just recovered claim as much. They heard the cultists speaking of it, of the eye's will, of their need to follow it and the fact that all of the cults seem to be collaborating. I mean, not nicely, but they're still working together in ways that are unheard of. That can only be reasoned with because of something larger than them. Interesting. That is about the extent of my knowledge concerning the Chained One. And again, this is all <laughs> ages of hearsay. Still more than what we had to go on before. Well, hopefully some of that is truth. Do you know what this primordial spark was it like a giant crystal shape or anything that I don't know. Sorry. Mm 
there seems to be a little bit of a connection to some gemstone that's broken apart, scattered across the lands, and it seems that people are trying to gather those shards. Well, I would think if anyone had a good source of information to go to, it would be you. After all your deities were around that long. If not young, but might have more information for you. Either way, it sounds like what you're going forward with is significant and incredibly dangerous. Did you say the Dark Lady? Uh-huh. That's very bold. To be fair, we didn't initially go in there with plans to kill her, but things escalated very quickly. You... 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 killed her. Nina just points to Nathan. Her eyes kind of slide over to Nathan. And you notice, like, almost like a sadness kind of comes over her. Uh, and she just kind of bows her head a bit. Her time was coming soon enough. I always said so. But it's always sad when a being as old as the Dark Lady leaves. She had some pretty significant last words. A whole prophecy regarding this. I'm not surprised. She we tried to make an I. ally out of her, but yeah. <sighs> yeah no. She allies with none. Lesson learned. I imagine Rundreth then will soon lose the darkness surrounding it. Perhaps I'll visit there soon. Start a new garden. Anything else I can do for all of you? You look so tired and worn. We have... So this is out of character really mm -hmm. quick. We have one of those orbs right locked away in the vaults at westbridge manor yes do we want to talk to her about those at all or no i don't think she knows anything but i've been standing here debating on whether i pull out the shards or not yeah i wasn't going to do anything there because that's that's your gambit <laughs> hmm. nina trust lamura with her life. If you want to bring up the orbs, I'm not going to stop you. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Devastation orb. Devastation orb. That's yeah, but... <laughs> Pretentious. <laughs> Devastation orb. <laughs> um, I don't think she's the right person to ask about these. I mean, I don't think, though... 
Yeah, I don't think I will. Unless, I think, because the orb was what Chara kind of found, I think, right? And yeah. Away. So I, I'll leave yeah. that to Chara if she wanted to, to ask. No, Chara wouldn't ask. No, well, it, realistically, Red Lurch was the site of one of those destruction orbs. I really don't want to be, like, flaunting right. that we have one. Yeah, exactly. No matter how friendly they are, they did just get over substantial loss. Yeah. From no, something I like that, so. Yeah. Okay, then, so when she asks, is there anything else I can help with? Um, I would hesitate a moment, but then pull out the satchel that I have the shards in and do a look over at Nina kind of like waiting to see some sort of assurance I'd give you like a nod and kind of like gesture at her like ask those uh shards of a gym that I've been talking about that I asked if you knew yes seems to be one of the Perhaps Heronius has put me on of finding them. But they yield a lot of power that's beyond any of us. And in fact, the last time I touched one of these, I went deaf and blind. Temporarily, it it was it was like a twenty four hour thing. Yes, sure. The horse gave me comfort. And but anyway, I just, mm. I just don't want her to think like we have to have greater restoration. You every time you touch them. Have you touched it more than once? She kind of looks at you like questioningly at this point like <laughs> the first time was before we knew exactly what these were the second was to see if I could get some answers but that's when the death blindness happened I see and how did you recover As Nina put it, it kind of 24 hours later just happened to get my sight back and hearing back, but no ill lasting effects. At least not that I have noticed yet. Insight check! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do insight versus, uh, Deception, I assume. <laughs> That's a 19. <laughs> Am I being deceptive? You don't Do have I... to tell me. You can just roll. Yeah. Deception or persuasion, whichever you prefer. It doesn't matter that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nina can read me like a book at this point. <laughs> there might be no physical scars, but you've got the mental ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. Um, I think I cough under my breath. Just like, <clears throat> I know that you don't know what these are per se, but I'm not sure if we should be traveling with these. I know it would be a lot to ask for you to house a potentially dangerous object, but at least I can't think of someone better. You see her kind of hand, hold her hand out. May I? Of course. You go to hand. Do you have them in a separate satchel? Would you just have them wrapped up? Uh, I have my satchel that had the one, and then inside that was Mia's with hers. Okay. We didn't want them to touch and yeah. so one of them 
Got absorbed, right? Yeah, one of them it, is abs- right. on your mind. arm. <laughs> one yeah yeah never mind that's right yeah <laughs> that's a little detail i am trying to block it out of my memory see i knew you had some scars <laughs> that's why i thought you were like trying to deceive her i was like okay <laughs> as i go to hand it over and then i look you know i like see my arm like oh shit <laughs> She, her eyes latch onto your arm and she closes her hand and kind of pulls it back before you can hand her the thing. And she takes a deep breath and instead lowers her hand and places it beneath your wrist and pulls back the rest of your sleeve to look at it, careful not to touch. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's in me, but it doesn't hurt. So, lasting side effects, then. She kind of hovers her hand over the arm, careful not to touch, and pulls your sleeve kind of back down and lets go of your arm. And then her eyes kind of flicker up at you. When have you last spoken with your guide? It's been a little while. What's happened since last I saw you? My Landro was murdered. What? Yeah. Um, that's part of this whole plot, mystery, the shards, this chained one, it seems we're way over our heads here. She looks visibly taken aback for a long moment. Or she just kind of takes a deep breath and nods. This is Far more serious than I had imagined. So you were without a guide. I received a new one. Yes. Um, Has been a little more in my face since taking over after the my Landra's loss. Still very cryptic. I don't understand why they have to be so cryptic all the time, but she. Oh my gosh, what the heck is her name? Let me go back to when I fell off the cliff. <laughs> it's like, right? I'm um, Ruda, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm Ruda, yeah, okay. Um, her name is Amruta, if you've ever heard of her. No, but that doesn't mean much. The... I know, there's more than one day, though. <sighs> there are entire planes of existence out there containing celestials and devas and all kinds of creatures. So... <sighs> but... For yours to be targeted is concerning. It was a a brutal death from what I've gathered. And um, Ruta basically said that it's dangerous being in our realm and said there was a deceiver among us deceiver among your party 
potentially. Her eyes kind of bounce between all of you for a moment. And I do say it out loud. And that mm -hmm. way, you know, they're behind my back and I can, can see if she catches anything. Well... And you're putting a lot on you. I, it, it is quite a bit more than I had realized was occurring. Uh, I mean, I, I can certainly reach out to the temples of Waterdeep. Um, I can send messages, requests for studies on what you. Ow! told me thus far. However, it does take time. And knowing the ancientness beyond time of this being that you're supposedly looking into, you're better off looking in places beyond writing. Your best bet is to speak to those who were around at that time, or at least in the times when stories were passed down by word of mouth and remembrance and not written on scrolls and books. Since the Dark Lady was a no-go there, do you have any recommendations on anyone else who might be that old? She, her eyes kind of flicker up to you, Rowan. You have direct access. But if you aren't certain you can trust your guide, that is even more concerning. But it seems to be working to a degree. Creating doubt. Shadows in the back of your mind. There's nothing wrong with doubt. As long as you keep it in check and you evaluate it. It's good to question. It's just not good to revel in it and remain in it. Do you believe Heronius is still calling upon you? Do you still wield his powers and his gifts. I do. Then put your hope into that. And when you next face your guide, trust in what you know. <laughs> well, I think in this moment, what I know is Maybe this shard isn't safe with us. As much as I would love to take this from you, I don't feel comfortable bringing this into a city that's just been raised. Especially if they are looking for these 
earnestly seeking them, as you say. I don't necessarily want them to find it, but... I understand. You are its best protectors. It's kind of a scary thought. Not to me. I've been around for a while. Not as long as you need, but... Well, I figured I'd at least ask, but I understand. And I respect it. Thank you. Is there any major consequences if you happen to start your own religion? Like, aside from it being a cult? And I'm not sure I understand the context. I just slowly turned to look at Shara. Listen, listen. Let's just say, hypothetically, that one was to start granting miracles for people and did it under, you know, the name and disguise of a goddess, per se. And then people started worshipping said goddess. It's not that bad. Right? So, you are asking if... Because the miracles are real. I'm not sure what I'm being asked at the moment. Does Chara need to worry about what has become its own rolling rock down the hill. You've created a religion. She kind of, her eyes kind of slide towards you, Chara. Yes, I think that would be the easiest way to explain it. And do you have any followers? Several, several. I have a couple of temples, actually. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. You, you, you see what looked like a little bit of a, you know, kind of kind, you know, parental, like, yeah, uh, like, <laughs> okay. And then when you say you have a couple of temples, she's kind of like that drops, and she's just like, you see a little <laughs> bit of worry start to hit, <laughs> right. That's impressive. Um, it's it's very much a real religion. It's not fake. Okay. No. The miracles are real. Yes. The religion is real. Like it's it's happening. There is record of things being created simply out of belief. Uh, there are gods that are beliefs, ideologies, and thoughts. So, uh, yes, you can absolutely create a religion. What does your <laughs> goddess, um, what is her ideology, so to speak? What does she preach? It's a great question. She preaches. I think I have this written down somewhere. Hold on. Typically, people seek Charts certain gods when they need things like 
for instance, Heronius, and she gestures towards Rowan. He's a god of war. He exudes war. He is the ideology of war and battle and chivalry and heroism. We just look over and Char's thumbing through mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of her books. What's the <laughs> name Literally. of your religion or goddess? I'm afraid, I'm afraid to tell you because then aren't you like complicit if you know? Does it matter? Know. I it's don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. Not something I need to stop unless it becomes harmful. To be fair, and it wasn't. It was all well intentioned. I mean, Westbridge had been under the thumb of the Black Earth for a while. Their fields were being <coughs> poisoned and plagued. And once we got rid of the Black Earth, this new harvest <coughs> goddess. I, yes. Yes. Her, her name is Yala, and her primary preachings are very much harvest and abundance and just really gathering as, as a family. It was meant to unite the community, I think. Right? Yeah. Right. It was, was I, I just want to make it clear. I... My main concern is more of the fact of, let's say, we have to go to the Underdark and are gone, and no one's around to continue Yala's work. Is that now going to be a detriment to the people, or does this, the faith need to be strengthened before we just disappear? Faith, as much as we all like to think we are strong in faith, faith comes and goes. It is something we strive towards when we need it. We strive for faith when we don't need it. However, we tend to fill our lives with other things and I don't need to preach about this. The point is, people create what they need when they need it. And if they need a goddess of harvest and abundance, then it will carry on. People find ways of believing things with or without the miracles to support it. I just invented the char over there like, yes, exactly. <laughs> Correct. However, what she said. With that being said, careful with the breach. There are other gods and goddesses who also adhere to harvest and plenty and fertility and they may not take as kindly to some of their followers being swayed by false gods. <laughs> but then again, Got it. they may not care. You know you would make a great day by yourself with your cryptic answers. Yes. No. 
No, I barely am able to care for the people of Red Lot. I cannot imagine being over planes of existence. That sounds terrifying and exhausting. So good luck to you. And she kind of crosses her hands and looks to you, Chara. May Thank you. Yala eventually find her way to our temple. Hey, quit. Sorry. Dogs are <laughs> Anything else? Did you feel anything with this? I'm going to show my arm again. Power? Chaos? Not something I would recommend you continue carrying. At least the way that you are. And she gestures specifically with her head towards your arm. However, if any of you are able to bear it, I would think you would be the most strong willed one. And I mean that in the best way possible. Stubbornness may win out for you here. However, you should have that looked at. You know who to even consider? Do I need to say it again? This one is remarkably stubborn. I am like to hear things. Well that aware. Hold again. It is a trait of followers of Heronius. Stubborn to the T. Ideologies to boot. And heroes of the rum. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I like start putting the statue mm -hmm. <laughs> away. Well, how about we leave our priestess to her congregation and we can go get that drink? Here, here. Enjoy. I'm sorry, we spent too much on you. What did you say? Uh, I'm sorry, we sprung so much on you. <sighs> Not at all. It's been harrowing. Not knowing what happened to all of you or what's happening out there. There's always questions, and it's nice to know. Again, I will reach out to my contacts. However, I think all of you, and her eyes even fall to Liam as well, have your own means. Enjoy. Rest. This town owes you a great debt. And she would walk all of you back through the doors. Um, as you pass back into the temple, you see um, quite a few of the commoners are 
you know, being tended to. Uh, some of them look like they've already been bandaged up and are kind of waiting towards the front, um, including uh, Maria. What did I call her? Ooh, I'm on the wrong page. Yep, Maria. Uh, who is standing there kind of with a couple of the commoners and waves at you. Uh, we thought we'd go get that drink, free drinks. Maybe? Is food here good? Yeah, same thing. Delicious. Right. Best in town. Are you guys from Red Larch? No, but we have history here. Everyone here keeps talking about you. It's almost like you're heroes or something. Well, that sounds about right. Yeah, we'll take that silence as it is. And she would kind of lead some of the commoners out and follow behind you guys as you head back to the singing sword. Did you have something else, Nina? No. no. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Is Sora around out in the congregation area, like right before we leave? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she would be or over by where the um, those that are being tended to, kind of helping with them a bit. Man, my, my camera just went to shit. Yeah. Um, you blurry. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'll look over at the group say, I'll meet you over at the inn. We're, we're in a couple minutes, catch up with you, but I wanna say a few words of Sora. Um, I'll walk over and just. She's like mid bandaging someone's arm and just looks up at you and a little bit of a nod. I always knew that garden would grow beautiful. <laughs> Who knew? I never thought I had a green thumb, to be honest. <laughs> kind of pats yeah, no this doubt. person's arm and sends them on. Sorry, I wasn't there for you. You've always been there for me. You look so different. I've changed. Yes, you have. And not necessarily for the better. Quite frankly, I'm. Um, Glad you've been spared some of the things that we've been through. You don't have to get into good much. work here. Wow. Is that what you just say? She just kind of nods and you don't have to give all the gory details, but. bad, isn't it? Change never comes easy. I mean, look at this town. It had to be destroyed before it could be raised to be something more beautiful than it was before. You always had a way of looking at things. 
our job is to remember those. The ones lost in the destruction. Carry on their memories and do what we can to make it better. I do miss you. And I just go in for another hug. I they just embrace you. Feels yeah. my shoulders just fall and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. You feel like the arm because they are a little bit bigger than you, and they just kind of brace their hand against the back of your head and just kind of nod against you and. And they pull back. They kind of brace your shoulders a bit. I know doubt is a part of who you are. And I wouldn't change that. Because it makes you question everything. But maybe don't doubt yourself so much. If you could see what I see, the things that you've accomplished, well, you probably still wouldn't believe it. It's kind of pats your face a bit. You go and wipe away. Mm -hmm. They start to fall. Take it from, not to sound pretentious, but from a paladin, one that's taken an oath. You're doing good. You may not always make the right decisions. but you learn and you move on and you adjust. And you always stick to this and she kind of jabs her finger into your chest. And when this fails you, she taps your chest again. You remember those that are supporting you. Because in the end, it's what you fight for. Those you fight for. The people around you, the people you love. Nothing else really matters. You're making You're a right. difference. Thank you so much. Now go get drunk. You look like you need it. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I'll give one more. Mm -hmm. uh, they embrace you. They kind of ruffle your hair a bit. Maybe brush your hair once in a while. I lost a comb and I turn <laughs> start heading towards the door and just do a quick little wave over my shoulder. Uh, the rest of you head towards the swinging sword in and this is the inn, so it's, excuse me, not technically the, um, like the tavern. They have a bar, they have food and stuff in there, but it's kind of, it's kind of become a little bit of both with the growth of the city. 
you notice that it's kind of taking on its own little tavern area. The city has grown enough that the Singing Sword Inn has also become a tavern and there's enough in this town for there to be two taverns. So you see it's kind of grown out along the side and there are multiple tables. There is a little area where you see um, some people just kind of plucking some instruments and uh, some singing and you all make your way inside and find your way to a table. I'm sure Liam finds Pell as quickly as possible. I feel like that's a a need be for for Red Larch. Well, Pell's in Westbridge. Oh, that's right. She stayed there, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. Oh, I for some reason I thought they came back. Never mind. Yeah, she. Ron, you gotta quit telling people that I'm creating a religion. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to go around telling everyone, but Lamora was one to be able to tell us if there was going to be major repercussions for you. If anything, it shows that I do care. Fair enough, but <laughs> just making sure we're on the same page. I'm now being like... Know that. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like the repercussions can't be too bad, right? I mean, like, as long as it's all good things, harvest, fertility, abundance, any gods in that domain would only want more of that, so... Well, it's not like they're going to other temples and poaching them and being like, hey, yo, right. yeah. don't worship this person, like, come worship my... Like, I'm not, you know, Fair. doing Fair. anything crazy like that. I... Here's the irony for me being someone who follows a god. There's a lot of how it works that I just don't know. So I was just utilizing a resource, someone who was more knowledgeable than I am on. So you do have blind faith in at least one thing in life. I mean, to a degree, yes. Because it's not us. <laughs> Fair enough. You guys sit down at a table, and as you make your way through, the, the, era, the rooms become quite crowded. Uh, it was crowded when you walked in. Um, the talk of free drinks and of the heroes of red larch returning um it's become crowded pretty quickly uh and you notice there's quite a few people that are day drunk already um they seemingly have bounced between uh the high helm helm a high high ha helm at high Holy hell. Helmet High Sun, uh, which is the other tavern across the street. Uh, and they're just kind of bouncing back and forth. And, you know, you see a few familiar faces uh, after you're sitting for a bit. Kalesa comes by, just kind of gives each of you a hug, you know, squeezing you. Doesn't know Nathan, does it anyways. Ruffles his hair, comes over to you. Nina is like, Ooh. Oh, you've, you, well, these are something. Would you like some ale? No, you uh, like the wine, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, all yep. right. And she kind of sees Char and she's like, oh, aren't you so pretty? All right. All of you, I'll get some ales very quickly, some wine for you. All right, and she scuffles off, and a minute or two later, she comes back, and big tray sets it down with meats and breads, and just 
puts a big pint down, like a couple pints as well, and just, <sighs> welcome back, you lot. So good to see all of you, Anne. Are you all right? She kind of looks at you, Nina. I actually, this is the best I've been in a while. I know it looks scary, but it's not. I mean, we're, you know, we're used to tieflings and everything like that. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing for it. It's just, you know, it's just the, the I flames and, and the, I the dead fingers yeah. and such. It's, you know, it's it's just a bit of a shock. But... Yeah, I just had a little magic go awry. But it's oh, dealt with for now. I am so sorry to hear that. What was that? It's a slide up. Oh. It's a little bit of an oh, yes, yes. I mean, it's so becoming. The way your hair just kind of flames backward into the white and just flows. Oh, that's Liam. Liam, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, all right. I'll leave all of you be. Let me know if you need anything. You'll not be paying for anything tonight, understand? If you insist. I insist greatly. And she would shuffle back and start working the busy room. Um, yeah. A couple times you have different people stop by your table, like uh, Endrith Valibo, the, um, one of the shop merchants uh, that Liam was very familiar with and was actually throwing his uh, Valibo sundries, his pamphlets. Uh, he would stop by, like shake hands with Liam and pat him heartily on the back and would just, you know, thank him for all the business uh, that he sent his way and how he's been able to expand and uh, that it's become quite the spectacle of the uh, Valibo's pamphlets that just emerge and appear in people's houses and from the air and it's, it's yeah there's quite a few things that have happened recently that you are getting the feeling you guys have had an impact on red larch uh and yeah you guys are well fed, uh, drinks around. Even when Kales is not providing it, other people will bring you uh, drinks and such. And you guys have a wonderful day drinking uh, late into the afternoon, just kind of catching up with people. And yeah, I think if anything, it's just like the group a deep breath like that we haven't been able to take it take in a while mm -hmm. um but we're all still like got that undertone of like work's not done yet <laughs> we just got some more answers ish mm -hmm. um so i think at some point uh nina will like turn to Rowan and just be like so how do you feel about all of what she said. The whole, I already have the ability to find answers thing is a little, I guess, scary is the word for it. I didn't even know what I'd... I guess I'd still say I still don't really know what I am. But... Is it true what she implied, though, that you're afraid to talk to your new guide? I don't even think I admitted that to myself yet. The implications of the data that was working for me being the targeted one. 
What if it was replaced with the deceiver? definitely making me rethink things. I mean, as you said, there there are things that I've had blind faith in. Oh, I was just giving you a hard time about taking the crystal from me and chasing after Nathan. I didn't actually mean anything by that. You know, I'm not really good the whole sarcasm all the time especially when i've been drinking <laughs> but sure well that's fair so we gotta figure out who this deceiver is then we had concerns about durgan and then we learned that he was down there in the mines that doesn't change things for me necessarily. The fact that he didn't release those people and kept going I don't know. How did you meet him again? The Durgan? Uh, just happened to be <laughs> A man by a pond? <laughs> <laughs> and you trust that you more what? than your God-given guide? There's more to that, okay? <laughs> you know, you'd make a pretty good Deva yourself for how cryptic you are. <laughs> And you can tell that it was like Rowan trying to be funny, but yeah, I know. Um, I mean, technically, that's mostly true, but actually, it happened here. As I had been walking around town, you know, that pond that's kind of on the outskirts of town? I had gone there to do some praying. I hadn't heard from Peronius in a while. And then I saw him across the pond, just fishing. And I felt drawn to him. It was like he was watching me, but also not at the same time. I mean, he wasn't necessarily looking at me, but I still felt like he was watching, and I decided to approach him and just have a conversation. One thing led to another, and he talked in his own cryptic ways. It seems to be a commonality in my life. And then, now that I think about it, that's, that's when I got this, and I pat the dissonant sword. <clears throat> hmm. I think... Nathan probably at this point would lean back and cross his arms. So he gave you the sword? The thing that you've been bitching about having to use? Okay, I haven't been bitching about it. I mean, you've been but pretty mopey about it. You haven't seen the things that it's been showing me. The changes that were caused by it. This is the first we're hearing of this. You've been seeing things? Not at all. I mean, that... 
Nathan just picks you know up what? a mug and is just like looking pleased with himself. <laughs> Kara's like, fuck all of you, I've been yeah. gone. Don't hang up on me like this. No. <laughs> Perfect. Nathan We've has been waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Since day one. Charia's gonna like, I don't know. I feel like the 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 instinct in me is like, no, I kinda wanna touch the sword now. <laughs> what would happen if I like reached over and like just kind of touched touch the hilt of it. You, you gonna do a slide of hand? Yeah, I think I'm going to. Go for it. Anyone that wants to roll a perception to see if they can see it. Okay, that was a 13. Okay. I know. <laughs> no, neither of you need a 13. No, I got a 10. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Not even close. My pass, she even beats my pass the perception with that, so. What did you get, Rowan? Five. Okay. Is that with your modifiers? Yeah. What did you, what did you roll? A two. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you ever roll a one or a 20. Gotcha. Um. Okay, so... I did roll that natural one earlier, I think I said, for the other perception. That was... Um, something... What did we have to roll it for? I don't remember. I think uh, I think no yeah. uh, whatever. All right. Well, from here forward, let me know. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah. Chara, you kind of sit there... As they're talking, feeling this urge inside of you, <laughs> and you kind of reach over and just kind of touch it. And it just feels like a sword. You don't get There's any kind happen. of vibes on it. Can I sniff it? Mm hmm. Yeah. You kind of lean so, over. Does it smell like magic or does it like? Yeah, you you take a good whiff of it. And yeah, it smells magical. Mm. It smells. Okay, I don't know what to do with this information now. I didn't yeah. think past this point. <laughs> Out of character, I think we do as a group know a little bit more about it, right? It was the Tai Chi's mm -hmm. sword, so mm -hmm. we know it's a sword of fate, mm -hmm. neither good nor evil. Yep. Yeah, it belonged to the goddess Tai Chi, who was the god of fate, and uh, when she well, passed, the sword became its own. It last belonged to somebody bad, I think, but it... It itself yeah, it kind of passed people. between hands between different masters who didn't treat it well, and it decided to become its own master. Mm -hmm. But Chara does have her like whole room situation where she saw the sword and the thing in the air and like that in her mind to think uh -huh. about. So. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a whole yeah. lot here. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> The mercy and doom and mm -hmm. balance and um yeah I don't think I oh well I think what I would probably say next is well if you don't want to talk to your guide right away we do have this meeting with Renwick that we could potentially ask Who's to say how old he is? I don't think he's as old as a god necessarily, but he could still be a few thousand years old, which is older than some people. Um, I thought he was only like a few hundred years old. I thought we figured out his story. Yeah, I couldn't remember what me and Liam knew. I think we knew it had something to do. It was like a sibling thing. That's how we bonded with him. Brother, mm -hmm. his, his brother died and he 
was he was made into a witch. So he okay. was the yep. he was his brother is the T L D R for Renwick. Yep. Okay. I'm really proud of myself for You that. knocked I'm that one out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a lich in front of you and you remember everything on it. <laughs> He was really turned on by him. Yeah. Chara, man. Um, Likes the old one. (laughs) (laughs) So, kind of got the hint that she wants you to talk to your guide. I kind of, Nina will gesture to Liam, I get the hint that she suggested you talk to yours. I didn't get that. Mm, no. I think it was just good advice that any one of us could really take. You know, just talk to your guide. Think. <laughs> Rowan, Liam. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to talk to mine anymore. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. I don't really have one, so. <laughs> what about I talk the. To myself? Did you tell us about the Inquisitor? The satyr dude? The one that appeared to me in my dream? Yeah, th- that was pretending to be you. It didn't appear to you in your dreams. It appeared to you on the side of the road. Oh my god, I forgot that happened. <laughs> like, it's fine. It was just a major char point. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. It was so long ago. I know, it has been. (laughs) I've been so focused trying to remember everything that's happened and how we got to this point. Um, But I think they did eventually learn about that, right? I think I did tell y'all. That was a major char point. But I definitely did. I wrote, stop. I think I did tell y'all about it. But maybe I, you know, I should, like, try to find him. It could be worth it. Like, if you got this is a great point. Fey people to talk to. The Fey are older than dirt. No offense, but um, I don't know. Okay, let me. I'll, I'll do some meditating on that. I don't think I can't remember. He didn't tell me how to get a hold of him. Well, he kind of disappeared when we were battling the Dark Lady, so I just hope he didn't die, because we thought you died, and then he was like, That's just right. clean, and like, faded away. I'll, I'll, I'll do some noodling on this. If... That's right, that really did happen. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, like, buy Felicia this, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, I kind of think like what gave you the ability to do the whole Yala thing. With your bubble wand? Yeah, no, I'm there now. I'm with it now. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the... is <laughs> like, I'm cutting myself off now. My <laughs> this drink away from me. <laughs> Not, I don't need a drink to forget, but apparently I do. <laughs> yeah, Kalesa comes by with another tray, uh, plops a uh, very nice bottle in front of you, Nina, uh, and just picks up all the used mugs and stuff, puts new ones down, all right, and scurries off. We really can't let her, like, keep feeding us without paying her, but we also need to sell the horses back so we can put money back into the vaults in Westbrook. Or we sell these gems that I have. Do you think Valley Vol will buy them? <clears throat> Do not chew on that wall. <laughs> I'm not muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was muted. too good. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a Chara gasp of like instant. Chara's like, just, yeah, you instantly yeah. hear, I love this. You instantly hear Char doing that. And you all look over and see her pointing at like some old scraggly man like just hair akimbo and he's like got a piece of the wall that's just come down he's just kind of gnawing on it 
with like two partially filled cups of ale in his hand. One's kind of spilling over and Char just says that at him and he just freezes eyes wide and then just keeps chewing on it as he pours ale into his mouth while he's chewing on this piece of wall. What? I have really high passive perception. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is just kind of ignoring this character as if he's just, you know, he's that guy. <laughs> that's, just, that's just Bob. He does that. <laughs> Uh, sorry, where were we? We were talking about. Yeah. Valvo. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we should? Because I have two garnets, two moonstones, and two diamonds that are worth 500. Like the diamonds alone are worth 500 gold pieces, which is how much we took from the vaults in Westbridge. So I'm oh, wondering. You keep the diamonds. So. I know that's my thing. Like, I do we know if we could get enough for the two garnets and the two moonstones to cover that 500, or do we have to sell those and the horses back, or do we just want to keep all the those for now and just sell the horses back and move about on foot? We can also wait to make this decision until we're done. I just don't want the horses to die and suddenly we have to come up with 500 gold to put back in the vault. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm I'm not really good at knowing how much oh gems are worth, but Well, to be fair, you don't have to know how much they are. You just have to be confident enough to sell them for what you need. I actually needed to scroll down. Uh Nina pulls more out and she's got just some other stuff that I looted. A brass jug with jade that DM told me was two hundred and fifty various other gems for 300 so we have enough i just have to find somebody to buy these things so liam do you think valuable will take these sure okay tomorrow then so apparently hoarding runs in the family i was just what? thinking that i was like wow that was very liam of you look i just wanted to make sure that if the yeah, horses did die that's kind of offensive look, rowan look Char, look at their faces they're exactly uh, the same experience. <laughs> all right all right you know what someone's got to pay the bills around here and it's not mrs i'm not gonna go talk to my god because i got trust issues nope definitely ain't gonna be me <laughs> I think that's all I have, though. Like, we could keep shooting the shit around and stuff, but... Yeah. We you... have a whole episode of that. <laughs> Alright, why don't we... Yeah, this is a good place to take a... Maybe like a 15... 10... 10, 15 minute break? We'll be back? Sounds good. Alright.
feel like I'm destined to never roll well <laughs> in this one. Your rolls are never like okay. in the middle. Nope. They're either like clutch or they're just always <laughs> so low. Have you ever changed your dice out or done any kind of oh, cleansing? I, I change them out each session. I, really? So I just reach into my bag and just grab whatever, like not looking, just grab what I want. So it's never the same dice. Maybe, maybe the trick is you should grab what you don't want. Because what you want's not working for you, Rowan. I mean, what's re interesting is like the dice that I'm using tonight <coughs> has rolled really well in my other campaign. So I feel like it's a campaign specific game. It is. It's also on top of it. It's taunting me because it rolls like the two is right next to the 20. So the 20 is always staring at me. <laughs> yeah. The. I, I have noticed, like, so in some of the campaigns, I mean, we do the digital dice, and so I bought a couple on D&D Beyond, and, man, it makes a difference which ones I use. As, like, stupid as that sounds, like, I know people are very, you know, superstitious about it, but, like, I can go from one to another, and suddenly it's, you, you you find the right ones <laughs> and it, it doesn't always have to be the same ones like I've changed different digital dice for the same character but for the night and it yeah just oh, yeah. it's for sure uh, in our other campaign that me and Liza are in we had a friend that was rolling shit with the digital dice and she was like that's it I'm changing them and it was like three natural 20s in a row after that <laughs> and they're like it, they're digital! How the, can the... Look, the, the universe real? knows. <laughs> Stories will be told the way they are meant to be told. Well, that's one reason I don't actually do the whole dice jail. I'm like, you know, it's got a story it wants to tell. Mm -hmm. If I don't see jack shit, I don't see... As he said, it's always come clutching moments that have been like the whole resurrection scene with the that soul. oh my gosh and that's the thing like it's just it makes really amazing moments because for as crappy as some of your roles are it's it's funny but it also is like become what your character is where it's like you're not charismatic <laughs> you're just no. and, and so like these all of a sudden, in the really tough moments, it's like, here's Rowan. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. What? One of my favorite moments is when you p dropped the shield and pulled Discord. I literally, the last time we were supposed to play and we had to cancel, I was re-watching that whole episode and I just, I always get chills. It was like such a cool moment. I, I just feel like the dice definitely want to tell the story. It's actually the relationship between Rowan and Nina, where it's like, mm -hmm. Nina can fully read <clears throat> Rowan now. It's just the dice have made it so, and it, but it fits so well. Yep. You can't kid a kidder. Nina has spent her entire <laughs> life lying, so. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the kicker, though. I rolled really good perception until Nina joined the party. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> it's fate, but man. Like, I have a plus exception, but I never roll double digits on a dice for a perception roll anymore. Yeah. It's like, a good thing we have Chara. Chara's a queen of perception these days. Yes, even good old Bob. <laughs> Man, I had this perfect uh, vision in my head too, like, like the cartoonish, like one eye is bigger than the other, and like spiked eyebrows and such, just like crazy old man gnawing on wood. Like Yes. 
All right. You can bob the D builder. <laughs> All right. You guys uh, are shown to some rooms. Um, you do have to bunk up uh, at least two door room uh, just because of the growing numbers coming in and through out of West Larch, West Larch, Red Larch, and West Bridge, Megan. <laughs> the numbers coming through Red Larch. Um, they're growing and the city's growing so it she definitely gets more business so she does have to double you up instead of single rooms um however you, you know you guys get a long rest uh fully boozed up and just sleep well into the next morning um and yeah what would you guys like to do as you wake up in these familiar areas? Sleep for an entire day. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think we're opposed to necessarily taking it easy for a little bit. I have my errand to Valley Bows that I want to run to try and sell some of this stuff, or at least to see if he would know of somebody else who would take it. Um, <clears throat> did Kippen stay in town to rebuild? No, no because she's back with Esme, Esme right? Mm -hmm. the... That's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> she's got a crush on our, our halfling forge master. I mean, I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> halfling or dwarven? I can't remember. Is, is Esme? Esme is a no. halfling. Okay. Yep. Have you seen those arms? It's the arms, man. They're big. Big and beefy. <laughs> I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't make my way to some of the more decimated areas of town and made some miracles happen. Yeah, let's let Hetchari have some chaos. Yeah. Like, it, I feel like I, I would really, really be remiss in the <clears throat> Alright, so... The question is, do you tell us, or do you just say you got errands to run and run away? No, I would try to leave, like, as dawn is breaking. Okay. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Rowan sleeps well, over once. That's right, you guys would be offset, so... I probably I almost imagine Nina and Rowan would be in the same room but I may be wrong on that how would you guys I, we could probably say we pulled straws and Chara got her own room like, yeah I kind of feel like that a thing. yeah yeah so Chara and nobody can tell if it was uh if it was uh <laughs> intentional or not yeah or... <laughs> the one that made the straws <laughs> Yeah, and despite that, Liam probably snuck out and went to sleep in a familiar tree that he liked to hang out with and maybe met his little friend in that one time. Um, so yeah, Chara, you wake up early. Uh, it's pretty quiet in the end, aside from uh, the shuffling of staff downstairs, getting breakfast ready, um, and... There's a few people out, but uh, you don't see Kalesa as you kind of nod to the staff and then sashay your way through and out the front door. And you see a bright day with clear blue clouds, um, blue clouds clear blue sky with fluffy white <laughs> clouds i did <laughs> the world is fact there's blue clouds um and there's bird song in the air it is cool and the bird song are the songs of the harvest birds um and you kind of pull your 
cloak around tighter and breathe in the cool air. <clears throat> and you start to walk and wonder. And you've not been to Red Larch before, so this is actually new territory and kind of exciting. And you wander and eventually find the main road seems to have been rebuilt quite a bit. But as you start to go down the back roads and the alleys, you see where some of the destruction is still trying to rebuild or be redesigned to match the new aesthetics. Um, you see mm -hmm. a lot of people that seem to still be kind of camping out as they uh, start to wake up, uh, gather their materials to rebuild their homes and such. Um, and you see quite a few closer to the southern edge of town where the majority of the wave uh, came from and very much decimated. Uh, yeah, you see quite a few people. Um, you start to hear the uh, hammering of hammers on nails and wood. Uh, the chiseling of stone. Uh, you start to see people with leather satchels carrying uh, stone bricks with them, setting it down and starting to build. What would you like to do? Yeah, so as I exit the inn um, and, I, and the doors open and the sun hits Chara, she'll transform into her yellow persona um, oh. with the long dark hair uh, and the green eyes and pull the cloak over her head instead of you know her normal look um, and start making her way down to where you know the, the these camps of, of people are as they're mm -hmm. waiting for you know things to be built um, and she'll step into the shadow of one of these buildings and let her bubbles flow for a minute and blow and blow some bubbles just to see what she can hear um and i'm gonna make sure that i can do that real quick um because i'm not looking for bubble wand of snooping <laughs> um think you have to roll to see if it recharges or how many yeah I need to roll I can roll once every morning and then it says I need to do two oh my gosh the user must roll two d20s to determine how many bubbles are dispersed and then a d10 to see if it'll regenerate more liquid mm -hmm. Um, so first we'll do the two day twenties. Beautiful. That's thir 13 bubbles this time. Okay. Oh, and it does not regenerate. Okay. Again today. So those are the only bubbles I get today. So <clears throat> you gently blow these bubbles cloaked, uh, and the bubbles disperse, the light of the sun just reflecting off of them as they float gently throughout and you kind of almost wave your hand, pushing them further. And you notice quite a few of the people that are starting to wake up from these camps and start to work. They kind of see the bubbles passing and just kind of give it an odd look. Um, but as it continues to pass by, they just kind of go back to their work and, um, you hear various thoughts around, um, of desires and wishes, base thoughts as well, uh, those wanting food, uh, those wanting a comfortable bed, 
some wishing their home could be built quicker. Uh, some wishing their father was still there. There's just a lot of mixed thoughts. Um, you hear one person that is mourning the loss of their garden uh, and may not seem like much but the things if there's anything you've learned chara with listening with your bubbles it's that it's the simple pleasures that people delve in and it's the small things that seem to bring the most joy Tara has a light bulb moment. Um, she would kind of, as she's listening to these thoughts and kind of the general, not just, they, they, it seems like a small, a small token would go a long way. She's going to just kind of not run, but speedily walk towards the closest grocery store or like market area she can find. Okay. Um, in search of fresh fruits and vegetables. Okay. And baked goods. <clears throat> okay. You do find um, a few stands where people are selling um, veggies and fruits um, and uh, fresh roots from their ground. Uh, you also find um, a building by following your nose alone to a little store uh, where you see a sign that, uh, actually, hold on. Hua, hua. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Hold on. We ride the right one. <laughs> uh, you would see on there a sign where it looks like it had been carved something and then bakery. And it looks like someone has carved something new and nailed it over whatever was before bakery. And you see on the front of it now is the uh, crumble cake bakery. And oh, as you... I'm so you push your oh, good, door open and you get that smell that you were following and it is fresh and warm and earthy and sugary and sweet and smells heavenly. Chara would, Chara would suddenly remember she's supposed to look and act like Yala and not like Chara. Um, <laughs> so she would walk very uh, not in like a dignified manner but just confident um very confident towards the counter and admire the the baked goods and just kind of comment you know i am i'm thrilled to see such you know such i don't want to use the word abundance so, well with such abundance and such a sad such a sad situation really a, a ray of light here you as you're yeah saying this you see someone step uh, or step up standing up from behind this counter that they had just been setting some baked goods on and they smile and it's a just a human uh, female with uh, just simple brown hair um, looks almost like they cut it themselves it's a little choppy but um, looks pieces of flour and um, baked goods kind of on their person and they smile wide at you and this looks to be a young uh, female probably in her mid-20s and she kind of dusts herself off and sees you and kind of pauses a moment as she takes you in. Uh, her eyes kind of widening a bit. 
Uh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, this is uh, the, the new bakery. I'm the new owner. It's, it's wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for coming by. What brought you here? Was it the smell? Were you drawn by the smell? It was the smell. It was wafting through the streets. I, I knew it. I, I, I told Lauren that, that that's, that's what it needed to do. We needed to waft the smell out so that people would be drawn in. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I, I'm, I'm Pillis. I'm the owner of this fine establishment, this bakery, and I would love to show you my baked goods. And she kind of just gestures to the long counter and the numerous amounts of goods that look warm and recently set out. Um, tell me, you know, which, which one of these is your favorite? Oh, well, I mean, we're known for our crumble cake, so obviously, you know, I, I kind of have to say that. However, you kind of see her get a little excited and she walks over to the edge. These are my favorite, especially this time of year when it's cool and the air is just getting so crisp and such. It just makes me think of pumpkins and spice and cranberries. And she kind of uh, lifts a towel back and you see these uh, like almost a mix between a bear claw and a muffin where it's kind of got like the muffin top around the edges um, but this kind of crispiness on the inside and it the smell of fall and spice but the sharp tartness of cranberry kind of hits you this is my specialty. Would you like to try it? I would love to try it. Okay. And she pulls out a knife and just gently cuts a little piece off and on the edge of the knife, hands it to you. And watches, like, stares at it, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would put it, I, I would eat it. Um, like, I would go, like, slow at first, and then I would get more excited as I chew, even if it's terrible. Like, Chara would just want to make this person feel so good, because they're just so bright and happy. Mm, this is so good! You really like it? I, I do. How, how much to buy all of it? All of it? Um, yes, yes, um, the, I'll get you a basket, uh, wow, okay, uh, wow, what a morning, uh, let me grab a basket, and she starts pulling a basket out, sets some, um, towels in it, and starts packing it in, uh, that, that's for all of this, uh, you know, it's not gonna be, I mean, they're big goods, um, Hold on, math's not my strong suit. Uh, Lauren! And she kind of calls backwards, and <laughs> you see, like, a moment later, like, a man come out, a young man, stretches, uh, hair akimbo, and he's like, oh, yeah. She would like to buy all of the, um, the cranberry spice. Um, I, I need you to please do your thing and do the thing that you do that you're really good at. I love you so much. And he just kind of... Oh, yeah. I'm so okay. sorry. I must I must not have been clear. Mm -hmm. I meant all of the baked goods. Like, what you have set out right now. You, you see both of them. Like, the young man's, like, mid-stretch, and he just, like, pauses. And they both just, like, stop. And you see Pillis eyes just wide. Um, yes. Uh, Lauren, go get more baskets. And you see Lauren just kind of finish his stretch, but like a little more like kind of, okay. 
and he goes back into the back and you see him come out with arm full of baskets and sets them down um <clears throat> it might be a minute uh i'll calculate this out and he pulls out you see him pull out like a book and a pen uh, and he starts writing and calculating as uh, Pillis starts putting things in and perfectly setting up these baskets in the best way that someone that is proud of their work will and uh, she would close them all and uh, do you plan to return the baskets, or do you do you wish to keep them? It will be a little bit of a cost if you want to keep them. I can make sure they're returned. Oh, wonderful. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm sure we can get more baskets in. It's okay if you want to. I just was not expecting such a wonderful customer to come into my store today. This is so wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Um... Okay, so with all of this, that's going to be, and she kind of pats uh, her significant other who just nods and kind of like shrugs off as he continues to write. And then eventually he kind of rips a piece of paper and hands it to her and she holds it. Okay. Whew. This is going to buy me a lot of sugar. Okay. Um, it's going, it's probably going to be about three gold. Oh, perfect. Really? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, These are Carl starting would... prices. I mean, we're just recently opened. Yeah. So Chara would set down um, four gold pieces on the counter. Oh, no. It's just three. And then she'll give, she'll give a little wink. A little wink. You know, starting prices, right? And then she kind of looks over at Lauren, who just said, like, nods at her. Yeah, take it. <laughs> and she kind of slides it towards her. Thank you so much for coming. Just make sure. Just try to pay it for it when you can. You know? Yes, I... I... I plan to make this bakery a good bakery. I have, I'm hoping that we're, we may be able to use this gold to get a new sign, don't you think? And Lauren just kind of shrugs, yeah. And he, you can see he's, the way he looks at her is very like taken. Like he, he loves this person, uh, but he's very much the <laughs> calmer of the two, you know? Um, just kind of looks at her and is like, yeah, yeah, we could do that. And she kind of gets excited for a moment. All right. Do you plan to oh, eat all those yourself? Sorry. Oh, you know, I, I'm realizing I only have two arms. Would you be willing to help me carry some of this down onto the other side of town? Of course. Of course. She kind of smacks at Lauren again and he's like, Yep. <clears throat> yep. Here we go. I can help you. And he grabs some and uh, he would help you carry the rest of it. And he'll follow you out. Perfect. Um, as, as they're walking, Chara is like going to be just kind of paying attention to those they're walking by and offering baked goods left and right and talking about the crumble cake bakery up the street and, and how this was this food is being generously donated to the people of the town just to really get the spirits up um and then as she's handing out the uh as she's handing out you know the baked goods and things you know she'll say you know what is it what is it they say oh my gosh now i can't remember Oh no, this is gonna kill me. <laughs> I was so ready for this. The, the thing that they say in Westbridge for Yala, where it's like, oh, 
Y'all will be with you in yours. Y'all will be with you in yours. That's it. Wow. And that's what she's going to do as she walks through and hands oh. the baked goods out. You. Everything about the witch known. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> These individuals, you know, they're they're not starving um, by any means. You can tell this town has really come together. No, they don't have homes yet. They are living in tents, but they are not destitute. They're all kind of taking care of each other. Um, and but when you come around with these baked goods, it's just this gesture of goodness um that is being brought through especially in, with the chill the of the good air bob god damn it <laughs> go back to the tavern <laughs> um yeah and the they all just they know the hard work that's before them but every good thing coming towards them is a blessing and you get the feeling these people are taking to this very quickly as you say this to them especially in a town that contains one of the few all faiths chapel um, a well-known chapel that just is there for all faiths these people are quick as you hand them these baked goods and you say these to them immediately Oh, Yella be with you and yours as well. Thank you. Blessings to you as well. As they quickly take to the uh, aesthetic, so to say, uh, of what you are putting out there. And the people seem grateful and warmed as they um, begin their day of hard labor and Lauren just kind of follows behind you, kind of giving small nods and smiles, uh, holding the baskets out as you also kind of take them from him and he'd take the empty one from you and just kind of follows behind you and you spread this joy throughout um, this area that was devastated and yeah. You, I, I would, you definitely should take an inspiration point for sure. Um, okay, I'll take an inspiration point for that. Yeah. And you notice the thoughts coming through the bubbles change a bit as they kind of turn from desires and such to content. Um, that good goodness has walked through and you know they're just enjoying the togetherness of building and people around them that care about them uh yeah and of course the baked Fantastic. goods are amazing yes and chara would save one of the baskets of baked goods as she walks you know says goodbye to lauren who's now carrying all of those empty baskets back to the bakery mm -hmm. um, and she'll take a basket to the tavern and as she walks through the door um, she'll transform back into her normal red-headed appearance um, and say look there were some benevolent citizens passing out baked goods those smell delicious <laughs> <laughs> they I'm do <laughs> starving <laughs> yeah Liam would actually reach in front of you Nina and take whatever you were about to reach for and snatch it thank you I specifically aim for something I didn't want yes. to start <laughs> so that, that I can oh, get that's what I so want. sibling and I love it <laughs> All right. So you guys. So I'm warning you. 
what time is it at this current uh, after she returns in? By the time she gets back, it's probably we'll say like nine o'clock. You guys are well awake. Um, Except for Rowan, o'clock. who's sleeping until one. Yeah, we're oh. working off your hangovers and such. Although some of you are well versed in drinking, um, but yeah. Who says it was the alcohol? <laughs> Well, you weren't alone in your room, so <laughs> I would refer the answer to your <laughs> bedmate. <laughs> That's not where I was going with it either. Dang, DM. <laughs> I don't know. Look, y'all, what my is mind is perpetually in the gutter. I don't know where you were going with that. <laughs> We're in the wrong town for that. Yeah, that's true. No, it's more simply... Rowan has had the shit beaten out of her. So many times. Lately. Yeah. The canyon falling from that distance. Like, it's just been nonstop that it caught up to her. Like, the, kind of that physically... Kind of, what was that one? When we got on the boat after or something, or... Like, keeps yourself going to the point of absolute collapse. So, the moment she was in a safe place that she knew she could trust the people around her, she just like knocked out for a solid 14 hours. That, yeah. All right. Exactly that, that familiarity, having how to talk with Sora, mm-hmm. and everything. I guess you can tolerate being in a room with you. (laughs) To be honest, Nina probably slept really heavily as well since she was up super late with the watch the previous night. So, Um, I think Nina and Liam probably go to Valley Bows, assuming that Liam wants to go say hi to his quote unquote boss uh, or pick up more flyers or something. But um, that's all I have left all right so you head to Valavos uh, and <clears throat> yeah you see the familiar uh, Liam would absolutely go with you uh, and you see the short uh shoot man i can't remember i feel like he is a no he might be a halfling he's short and he is (laughs) has big spectacles um and he would absolutely greet you all uh once more and yeah, if you want to sell your items, for sure. Uh, we don't have to RP it unless you really had things you specifically wanted to ask him. No, uh, as long as, like, you gave me some prices on what they're worth, so as long as you don't want me to have to haggle those. No, uh, with um, Liam's efforts with uh, helping Velivo, they kind of struck an accord, and with the... Um, continued growth of his shop as well which you notice new areas have come in and the shelf this place has just gotten even more uh, room of requirement yeah. looking <laughs> like just stuff everywhere but and you see like young kids running about uh, as he directs them um, children of the town uh, some of them orphaned that he has uh taken in given jobs Pell used to work here um and yeah he he has them you know doing tasks and things and in return he pays them and they get a place to stay and shelter and yeah so uh he yeah he would pay you fair prices at whatever it says on there okay 
So I will sell the various gems for 300. Okay. The small gold bracelet for 25, and then the brass jug with jade for 250. So a total of 575 gold to bring in. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to ask for Liam, just because Liam's not here to do so for himself. Yeah. Valley Bow has expanded. Is there anything eye catching that Liam might like? Yes. And in that moment of time we will save that because i also want to okay. give him the option to sell stuff too um okay. if he wants and i'm sure like any of your party that wanted to a, a, any of you that want to sell things i would say feel free to do it now unless you wanted to save it for later however this is a good you know yeah. you're going to get fair prices here because of your um, relationship with Valley Bow. I will also give the two diamonds that I'm holding on to for some reason to whoever has Revivify. That would be me, yes. Okay. <laughs> you, you now have uh, 500 gold pieces worth of diamonds. They were two different Sweet. gems, but worth 500 total. I think that's all I had. That's all, all the stuff that I want to sell. So, cool. Awesome. All right. Oh, any potions of healing? Does does Valuable have potions? I can't remember. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you want to purchase potions of healing, absolutely. I would like a couple, just given our penchant for getting into trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Can I, would he have, like, at least two? Oh, he's probably got about five of them. He's probably got, like, five regular. He's probably got, like, um, maybe two greater. And then probably one superior. Shoot, what are those prices? Uh, let's see. I think I have them somewhere in here. I can never remember. Uh, where's my find? I think I would too, but... It's just... We always in the Pagali, so I eh. remember. I thought I had them on here. I had a table of. Maybe I deleted it. Oh no. Uh, yeah. So regular healing are twenty-five gold pieces each. Okay. Greater healing are a hundred. And superior are a thousand. Okay, I definitely can't get the superior, but you said he had five of the the regular, regular. And two of the greater. Yep. Um, so that's a hundred and twenty-five and two hundred, so three hundred and twenty-five. Mm -hmm. hmm. I've got six platinum right now on top of the gold that I just made, which is a hundred over. So, and platinum is 10 gold each, right? So that's 60 gold. Mm -hmm. So I've got like 160 gold that I can put towards this. So let's at least get the five regular. Okay. And then if anyone else wants to get the two greater, they can. All right. Any, I'll, if neither Chara, you or Rowan want to get the greater, we'll leave that to Nathan or Liam if they want to. We can also Perfect. discuss that the next session too. I'll make, make yeah. a note of that. The greater was a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with that, I would give all of us at least one. So Rowan, you have a potion if you ever need it. Chara, you have a potion if you ever need it. And then I'll give the other two to the guys when we reconvene. And that's just the basic one. Yeah. Okay.
All right. And. Okay. You guys In make per Oh yeah, go ahead, Rowan. Sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. The black gem that's in my equipment mm -hmm. that you added, that's for the shard. The mm -hmm. shard itself, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When I had interacted with it, do I did I learn those other capabilities of it? Was that still Oh, like, the ones uh hold on. I feel like no yet. Let me look. Cause um I don't remember which ones I actually gave you. It's kind of weird when... So one thing I'm... I feel like they could do a little more improvement on in D&D Beyond is... Like DM notes mm -hmm. versus... Like what yeah. you... When you give something to a player. Yeah. Because uh, I, I don't feel like I would know any of that stuff yet. Well... Okay. No, I would say you gather there is power to this that you have access to. So actually this, I, I feel like you would know there is... As a player, you can utilize these and we can narrate it in the moment as to how it works yeah, yeah. so and yes I can see it being kind of like this where go to use it mm -hmm. and yep then learn how to affect it 100 percent yeah i just wanted to make sure that it was the shard that's yep like yep okay. currently on your arm Okay, so it represents the one embedded in me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The one in your pouch, yeah, that that one you you don't know anything really other than it's very similar to the one you have, but it looks a little different. Understood. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Anything else you guys want to do in Red Larch? Or you just want to like chill, take a few days, like rest, whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, I feel like we need to like come up with a plan so we can go talk to this lich. But if there's anything else we want to do or any like reconnaissance, do we want to be tricky and try to find out more about the cult and the way they're like recruiting? But I want to like, I don't know, I want to give. Liam and Nathan a chance to weigh in too because they've always got some good ideas as well um I have something specific to you you haven't really done all the avenues of potentially trying to heal from eating the slug mm -mm. I don't know if there's well technically actually that would be <laughs> once I woke up I realize that everyone is gone. <laughs> you just wake up and start talking like. <laughs> I roll over. The sun's already like. Yeah. <laughs> noon. Um, I'm downstairs eating all of Nathan's cheese while he just eats the meats on his plate for lunch. Yes. So that's just not even. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are just sitting there silent. Like, the two of you at the table are just silent, but just doing your own thing, just sitting there, just yep. kind of crowd watching. Yep. Probably reading books or something, honestly. We probably each have one from What's His Face's library, but. Mm -hmm. Morning, sleepyhead. What, what time is it now? Almost lunchtime. Guess you can say I needed that. Guess you did. Nathan. You slept like a rock. Kicks a chair out for you. Thank you. So, 
What have you all been up to? Well, I got us the gold we need. Uh, a couple of potions as well. This one's for you. Um, Chara got some baked goods while she was out this morning. Some <laughs> nice individual was handing them out through town, apparently. Are those the leftovers? <laughs> um, you could check that basket. <laughs> Are there any left? I don't think Nina would have eaten the last one, but it's gone. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's crumbs in the bottom. Really but the <laughs> there is cheese as he kind of pushes a plate towards you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel like he says it with. I, I do like cheese. Were you here when Nina asked why he doesn't like cheese? I don't. I don't think I was. Okay, I think I asked that in front of the group, and Nathan doesn't like cheese because it was one of the things that was given to him when he was, like, imprisoned, right? Like when he part of the like he was locked up, and it was the only thing that he was given to eat, and so mm -hmm. it's like a trigger for him, mm -hmm. so he doesn't. Okay, eat yeah. Cheese. I don't so. think I don't think I was informed of. Yeah, I don't, that might have been one Where? of the things you weren't here for. Yeah. yeah. I did have a thought. Just one? I hope, hope you had many. <laughs> really? Sarcasm already? I've been up five freaking minutes. It's really funny to see your reaction. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? What was your thought? It doesn't matter anymore. You know? It ah, matters. Don't be come like on. that. Just come on. Honestly, I owe you an apology, Nina. Yeah. Yes, I am apologizing to you. Try to... If it was hurting you at all about me making fun of a new look. Oh. No, I mean... I think you're right in a way. Like, I loved how I looked before, but this just gives me a certain edge to like really intimidate people. But the downside to it is the people I don't want to intimidate, like the people we rescued, they get a little freaked out. So it's just gonna be hard to make new friends, which just means you guys are stuck with me forever. But I realized that we haven't really checked all the options of whether it's possible to reverse it. I guess we haven't. Do you want to reverse it? I... I don't know. I guess I hadn't thought about it. At first it was a little freaky, but I've gotten used to it. I mean, I, I don't definitely have don't any issue there's... with it. And I definitely don't think that there's like any lingering consequences. I mean, it's not like I'm going to keep transforming. The black things haven't spread further. I gave away those other larvae, so we don't have to worry about me accidentally eating more. Not that the first time was an accident. I, I just was like, meant, accident? Yeah, no, I just meant like, I don't know, a power craving or something. Um, I don't know. I will get back to you. Did you have something in mind that you thought would help? 
no, not didn't get that far ahead, but I just thought that we have some downtime and we're haven't really thought about it. I didn't know if you thought about it. I mean, I just thought I'd bring it up. Well, thanks. I think I'm okay for now. For now. So you know you don't need to punish yourself. <laughs> Nathan kind of scoffs and <laughs> just... As in the struggles of not scaring away the people that you don't want to scare away. I might be a princess, but I think you're the one who wears the crown of punishing yourself. I never said I was <laughs> giving you the crown. <laughs> I can be worse than you, but there can be two of us. If anything, I understand. I don't think of it as much of a punishment so much as a reminder. I'd do anything to keep you guys safe. You've done a lot for me. And it's kind of a badge of honor more than a punishment, I think. At least that's how I'm taking it now. Fair enough. But if somebody sees me and it's like, oh my god, that's the queen of the underworld or something <laughs> like that, we can talk and maybe I will stop masquerading. Actually, I whatever. think that would make you happy because it'd be like, huh, who's got the crown now? Let's Actually, you're go. not wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, anyways, I just... Thank you. I don't actually think it's necessarily better or not. I'm just trying to poke fun, but... You can poke I don't know how it comes across. It comes across just fine. Don't worry. You have humor. Even if you don't smile all that often. Hmm. Is there more cheese? And bread. Meats too. And I will like flag down Kilesa <laughs> to mm -hmm. bring over a proper breakfast for Rowan. Yeah. Whole tray of food comes in. Uh, cooked meats. Um sausages and such uh, with some sauces uh, things that you can drizzle over it and breads and cheap butter so uh, we got our errands run we can keep the horses because I have enough now to pay back the vaults of Westbridge and leave a little extra as interest um, what do we want to do Like a chihuahua just came up in my ankle, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rat Kayla's is off to the side, like, oh, don't mind Bob. He just he cleans the floors for us. We could do some digging on some face stuff. But that sounds great. I have a few leads that I need to follow up on. And I have no idea where to start. That's our forte. 
somewhere to go I mean, and know where to lead us there. So. Why is this always our forte? <laughs> why? <laughs> because we are a group of many talented individuals oh, that like yes. to be told what to do. Ah, oh, yes. Well, I'm told. As I was thinking we were in a larger town, so there's more likely to be more fey or fey knowledgeable individuals. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Maybe start there. Alright, yeah. so you want to <clears throat> maybe question to see if there's any, like, um, libraries or, like, research facilities? For sure, yes. For sure, yeah. Um, a library would be great. <laughs> so, there's no library uh, in Red Larch. Um, it seems there's a reason why a lot of people refer to Waterdeep. Um, Valley Bo has like some books and things like that that he sells. Um, however, an actual place that possibly would store knowledge and things like that. Red Larch, despite it being a couple days travel to Waterdeep, a conglomerate of knowledge like that is just it's more known it it's actually better to leave and head to Waterdeep because of the vastness mm. of the knowledge uh, kept in their libraries and scholarly colleges and such, um, as opposed to building a library research place here. Um, it's just easier to travel to Waterdeep if you're researching things. So they really haven't built a library um, you'll find books and things like that, but nothing really research worthy. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to go to Waterdeep? Good. I'm... If we could make a pit stop. Yeah, I mean, it's a few days south, but if we need answers from ancient ones, I feel like a repository of books is probably the better place to start until we start talking to the people inside of our heads. Yes. Look at us making a plan. <laughs> it also wouldn't hurt to be able to pick up any rumors along the road. Um, yeah. What I'd hate to do, though, is head all the way south before we check back in at West Ridge. Um, hmm. Do we know where did Antino go? I thought he was coming to Red Large. Do we know that, or did he mm -hmm. go somewhere else? Yeah, no, you you know he had come to Red Larch to try looking in his, it was his original destination to to make the sending business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, to set up shop for the communications guild. Um can we uh Nina would just go, let's if we head south first, which is totally fine, let's just find Antino and we can send Galliver a message to let him know that we're safe that we will be back we can ask if he needs anything while we're in the city and promise well maybe we don't mention we have his money until we get back because i don't even know he knows it's missing yet i think that's a great idea <clears throat> all right wait no i mean i left him a note that says i owe you but I just took it straight from the vaults. We were in kind of a hurry, I think. Cool. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't really. This is why I didn't tell you. 
Oh yeah. Because I'm having a face. <laughs> Tinge of judgment. <laughs> No, but I also think it's fair that this is probably the reason why you didn't trust me with the shard. So we'll call it even, and I will work on being more honest. Yeah, right. Actually, I was <laughs> gonna say, for the situation in the moment, he also kind of pissed me off, not gonna lie, so... <laughs> well, to be fair, we're not taking his money, we're taking the town's money that they used to- Okay, that actually makes it worse. I know, well, I, I, well. I know, I'm just like, yeah, anyway, okay. I'll pay him back, I've got the money, I promise. Gotcha. That's enough. For, <laughs> for now. Um, alright, so we head south. Alright. some rumors. And hit up the big city. Liam knows a ton about Waterdeep, right? Isn't that where Liam's from? Do we know what that? I feel like he's mentioned it. Anyway. So you guys are headed to Waterdeep or Antinos? Antinos and then Waterdeep. Yes. Okay. All right. So you first head to Antinos. <laughs> and um, I mean, it's a new shop. So it's, yeah. it hasn't had a lot of work done yet. It very much looks like a stand with a little bit of back backing to it. Uh, looks like maybe there's a tent that's kind of been built off to the backside. Uh, that is maybe where he's been kind of living. And uh, as you come up, you notice uh, he's talking to someone. Um, uh Eyes closed, hand gripped around uh, something, uh, and you see him kind of speaking to the person in front of him. The person, like, gives a nod and a thanks and then waves and walks off, and Antino kind of uh, drops whatever was in his hand into the box and closes it, marks something down, and looks up and notices all of you, and you see him pause for a moment, and then the quill he just puts it down purposefully welcome to the connections guild how may i be of service to you you fine fucking people of red larch good to see you too antino what are you doing here well, we trying to send a message. We heard that you're the guy for the job. Absolutely. As you can see, set up a new shop. It's working, making daily wages, a little bit tie than going to the guild. Yeah, you know, and I've got a living spot out back. It's great. You're all settled. Yeah. You know, came here to start the business here. It's not going too bad. And Miss Pipsy, is she around too? You, you she notice, was like yeah, time. you notice at this point, like all of you get the sense, like he's happy to see all of you, but with seeing you, you see there's something burgeoning, like that he wants to talk to you about and when you ask that he's kind of yeah no uh, i sent miss pipsy north yes miss pipsy can take care of herself look i i'm so glad to see all of you i gotta ask how's corbett doing He's not answering any of my calls, but then again, Miss Pipsy also hasn't come back, and I sent her up north to kind of, you know, keep an eye on him. Oh. She hasn't really come back Corbett's yet. Corbett's staying with us now, right? I think he's in the mansion now, right? Mm -hmm. Corbett's in the mansion, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Is Miss Pipsy a dog? Yes, as far as we know. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I... For a second, I 
dog. I was like, like put a face with the name, and I was like, it's a dog. Yep. As yep. far as we know, Miss Tipsy is as a dog. As far like as you know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, it is a corgi. All right, all right. So I did remember that too. Yeah. Like my mind is playing dirty corgi. Okay. <laughs> Tipsy is the dog. Behavior that makes us wonder. <laughs> so. I forgot about that. Miss Pipsy was up north keeping an eye on Corbett because Nathan's interacted with Miss Pipsy and everything. So as far as we know, Miss Pipsy is actually fine up there, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I totally forgot. I that things have been crazy, but no, she's fine. Um, there was a thing at the the tavern, um, but nothing that. Corbett was necessarily hurt by was it was just some shit but um, he's safe they're safe um, they are actually living in uh, the mayor's mansion with us now our mansion but the mayor still lives there too it's a whole whole thing it sounds like a whole, whole thing story. that's actually the person we need you to send the message to to yeah. Miss Pipsy um, but safe all good. That's good. Yeah, I was I was worried about him. I think Corbett's still just Yeah, I think Corbett's just still coping. Um It's gonna take some time. Yeah. And when you say calls, I'm assuming that you're sending an, a message. Maybe letters would be the best way for a little while, with everything that he's had going on in his head. It might be good to not have voices there for a bit. Hi. Oh, yeah, thank you. I... <laughs> it's, uh... I appreciate that. It's... I mean, I'm used to having Miss Pipsy around, you know, but uh, I sent him up, sent her up to keep him company, and she's been a little quiet. Uh, Colbert and I have been through a lot of shit together, so... Miss Pipsy can cast sending messages to you? Uh, no, but I can send, I can, no, I, I mean, like, when she's here, you know, I got company, and things. this is my, this is my yeah. friend, you know, and... Corbett and I used to talk all the time, but, well, she uh... Probably thinks that... She probably thinks Corbett needs her a little bit more than you do. Which is good. That's... Okay. She knows what she's doing. Alright, so... We're not uh... necessarily... <laughs> We're not necessarily heading back to Westbridge yet. But when we get there, perhaps we can talk to Corbett, see if he is up to come and see you then? I mean, are you ready to host guests? Do you need help? He might be good for him to get back to some sort of routine. Uh, Corbett's... He's been through a lot, you know? Yeah. You can't really, can't really make the path for him. He's gonna make his own path. However, if he wants to come down and visit, he's got a place here. I'll make sure of it. Fair enough. Okay, so I need you to send a message. That's what I'm good at. What What do you need? Um, it is to. Is his first name Gallagher or his last name? I can't remember. Gallagher is his first um, name. Okay. Uh, it's <clears throat> to Gallagher and Liam, and I kind of elbow him. I need you to, like, I think he, Liam has, like, minor illusion, right? I need you to minor illusion what Gallagher looks like. I... Uh, so... And then... Um, we need to say... Oh, for the sending? Yeah. You would remember that um, Antino specifically specializes in the magic of what he does, being a part of the Connections Guild, 
when you pay the money, you imagine and think on the person. Oh, that's right. And when right. you hand that over, yeah, it's, uh, he's able to make that connection for you. A little bit empathic. In yeah. That. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, okay, so the message I want to send is, I think I have 25 words, right? Yeah. Voluntold's here. We're good. Heading to water deep. Need anything? <laughs> Be back soon. And then I got eight words left. Do we need uh -huh. to say anything else? Isn't there an original question that you wanted to ask him about? No, I want I wanted to pay him back, but I don't necessarily trust anyone else to take a five hundred gold, and I don't want to go up there and then go back down because it's a couple of days up there and a couple of days back. So, I just want to check in essentially to let him know that we're not dead. Right. <clears throat> um. Uh, like. Take care of Corbett. Yeah. Take care of Corbett. Four more words. Say hi to pal. <laughs> Perfect. You uh, see Antino take the coin. Uh, and man, it's so funny when we do the message spell, how stunted and precise we are whenever we do those. <laughs> um, he would, uh, you see him kind of mumbling the words and, uh, and then he kind of tilts his head and nods. All right. Yeah. No, uh, he said, uh, <laughs> all right. Guess the good. Ducks left early one day. Like the idea of money coming through. And... Why water deep? That's it. Well, that's going to be a story for later. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forget in two minutes. Yeah. Like he really cares. I think he does. <laughs> so why are all of you headed the water deep? Well, we are digging into some stuff that is so fucking old that we need a library for it. Yeah. Fair enough. And this lovely lady's got some questions. Correct. Looks at you, Chara. Kind of winks at you. Oh, that's right. I definitely hadn't sent a message for him before. Mm-hmm. Or I asked him about it. I don't think he sent one. <laughs> you could use him to send a message to your satyr friend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh. Big brain work in here. <laughs> I think crossing planes, crossing planes might be harder, but maybe. <laughs> Hi. Maybe he's still on this plane. Maybe. We don't know where he is. That was two silver? Is that what his cost is? I think so, yeah. It's not much. Let me see. I think it was. Hold on. <coughs> but Excuse I think me. I... Or I, mean, I asked 
him if he could do interplanar messaging. That was my question that I asked him way back when. He might be right. And I can't remember if he was like, you have to have a specific person in mind and he could do it and I couldn't picture a specific person or if he was like, I can't do it. I feel like wasn't someone like the connection had to be stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there has to be. Like, there's a percentage of whether or not it'll make it through. Um, if you're familiar with them, there's a. That's right. A, a certainty with it. Um, now, when you start crossing planes, it's it's kind of a will it go through or not however Antonio would kind of nod hearing what you guys are talking about and, well yeah I mean I, I specialize in this this is what I do if you it all depends on what you can infuse with your familiarity into that gold coin that silver coin right there. <laughs> it was like the price jump? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You know, plane okay. hopping and such. It's just... It's the long distance fee. <laughs> gotta, you know, I'm living in a fucking tent. I mean, give me a break, yeah. Okay, the most okay. important 25 words you're about to say. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So I'll give him... I'll, I'll pull out two silver. Silver. Nope. He pushes your fingers over it. Think on him. On him or her. Whoever it is you need contact. And then you hand that to me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna think really hard about the satyr. Mm-hmm. Whose name I can't remember. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the investigator, but because we learned about him at the same time. Anyway, the investigator. I'm focusing. focusing. The investigator, and then I don't know if the rest of you remember what the dark lady called him. <laughs> now, I want to go, now I want to go back. Hold on. I need to go back and rewatch. Oh yeah, the radish wedding. Ooh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was so sweet. The radish wedding. We still have to attend that, actually. <laughs> oh shoot, we do. <laughs> I thought we did attend it. Uh, yeah, I thought you guys were there. I thought we were there. Oh, maybe we did. I don't. I think you I did. We... Now that you say that, I, I forgot the radish wedding. <laughs> I'm glad you guys I'm are like taking good notes. And you know, like watching us like go back and forth about this character. Yeah. Like the radish wedding. He's used to it. That. You know. <laughs> He's just sitting there like, hmm. That's interesting. What is I thought that the dark lady called him the investigator and he gave us a name. He gave me a name. Or the Inquisitor? Not investigator, inquisitor, I think. I can see him in my mind. He had a monocle, right? Roll roll history checks. <laughs> to see if you can <laughs> recall this. And DC is probably, well, I'll say 13. Which is a really random. Okay. Alright. Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> I got a 13. <laughs> I get a 15. I'm going to use my inspiration. You know what? I'm using my inspiration. I mean, 13, if you meet it, you beat it. So you, you got it. Okay. Okay, well, I got a 13. All right. Did he have a monocle? You that up? weren't there, unfortunately, when the Dark Lady said this. However... What, uh, what did the rest of you get? 15. Sorry, I didn't roll history? Yeah. 
Three. Okay. Rowan remembers, and at some point she mentioned it to you. So you between the two of you, the Dark Lady called it the Prince of Fools when she was speaking directly to him. Well, that's so rude. I literally turned to the page that I have that written on as you said it. <laughs> but I have... I guess I didn't realize that was in re reference to the Inquisitor. I thought she was calling Rowan that or something else. Because <laughs> so, I have Dark Lady whispers to Rowan calling her the Prince of Wolves. <laughs> so, it was... Yeah, it was... a. So, when she was leaning down... Rowan happened to be there next to Charo's body. Oh. But it was actually Dark Lady was speaking to, to the, the Prince, of Prince of Fools. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, I'm... I got this. I'm going to focus really hard and try to, like, remember his magic and, like, the way that he, you know, just remember the encounter that I had with him on the edge of the field. Okay. And then you hand the coins over. And Antonio would take them. And would look at you. Hi, hi. Oh, shit, now I have to say something. Yeah, what do you want to say? That's also a very Chara reaction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> About him, he just knows what I want to ask. Oh, shit, I have to say something. That's part of the 25 words, too. Yep. Um, this, do, do conjunctions count as one word or two words? Probably one, right? If I say I can't. Like, yeah, can't, can't would be, yeah, two words. Great, 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 great. I'm just making sure. Thank you. So, it's Chara. I have questions. I think you can answer them. Where and when can we meet? I think that was 17 words. Mm -hmm. mention, mention that you're making really good use out of the bubble wand. Uh, 17 I have put your gift to use. I just think that's a little cherry on top. He'll, he'll be tickled by that and want to reach out and hear all about it. Very good. Thank you. You see Valo uh, Valo You see Anton, though. Uh, listen to your words. And when you finish... You see him grip his fingers around the coins and close his eyes. And you see him, his lips moving as he mumbles the words uh, perfectly. And half a minute passes. Minute passes. You see Anthony though kind of open up one eye looking to see if you all are still there close it again okay okay nope here it comes <laughs> it takes takes time sometimes in cross planes you see him kind of brush back some of his fur behind his pointed ear all right. So uh, your friend said, well, he kind of made a hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> so good to hear. Uh, 
I've been hearing all about the escapades of Yala. So proud of you. Can't talk now. Expect her to be visiting you, though. And then you see Antonel kind of tilt his head with a bit of a curious look. She's going to be coming soon. That was weird. Normally, there's only a certain amount of words they can do, but... Whoever your friend is, they just pushed right past it. Who is your friend, by the way? I've just been calling him Mr. Wigglesworth in my head. Huh. <laughs> Interesting no, character. I've, I've really been calling him Mr. Wigglesworth in my head. <laughs> so. <laughs> he sounds like a trip. And a half. Um, was he referring her? to? Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> could, there's a couple of people it could be. Uh huh. But the first person that really comes to mind and is it's kind of the Fae Queen. No. No, it can't be her, right? Are you like royalty in the Fey world? Are you talking about the Fey Queen? Maybe. And maybe. Holy shit, balls. That'd be, be kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Before. I've talked to her before. You have? No. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> you can roll insight chart. Uh, you're gonna have to roll deception. Deception. <laughs> I got a 22. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe it. Have I not talked to the queen? Am I making this up? I thought I had a conversation with her. Not, about her gem. Uh, no, you talked to a uh, fey creature. <gasps> oh, I did. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I don't have my notes with me. Oh, you're fine. So I'm really just like diving Going in off there. of memory? Yeah. No, it was one of the, um, during one of your spiritual... It was the second spiritual yeah. dream. I don't think it was the first one. It was the second one that I asked about for an event. Yeah. And... Well, it's so fitting that Chara would have fainted the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my knee-jerk reaction is the fake queen is going to come and visit me. I don't know why. I don't care more. But maybe I am. That's kind of cool. You guys are really moving up in the world. <laughs> that is one way to just, or to, to, what am I trying to say? To describe it, yes. Well, up or down, as he, his eyes kind of look at your horns and stuff. But hey, I look great. You do, you look beautiful. Thanks. But you also look kind of devilish. Yeah. Kind of fiendish. Yeah. Tiefling blood has to start somewhere in the family. That's true. I ain't got no re no issues with tieflings whatsoever. So what were the other options of her? <laughs> <laughs> you said there were like three. So my first my first instance is the queen. My second guess is my mother, 
whom I don't have any memory of, so I couldn't tell you if it's true. And then my third, I've forgotten there were only two. So we're gonna go with there were two. Which could actually be one and the same if you're Fey royalty that you don't remember. I, I, you know what? Listen, everybody here knows I will exaggerate my status as soon as I'm able, whenever the opportunity comes by. I don't think I'm Fey royalty. I think that's a stretch. I think. Okay. No. I feel like I just have much, much, much cooler powers. That was fate royalty. Hey, I think your powers are great. Yeah, you saved our asses quite a handful of times. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll take it. But, you know, she did say she's coming soon, so whoever she is, we should go to Waterdeep so I could, like, try to not embarrass myself in front of the queen. Sounds good. To Waterdeep then, and then I'll explain to Gallivar awesome. while we're going there, because I don't feel like I know yet. <laughs> I right. love that our sense of planning is that we chose a place to go, but we have no idea where to go <laughs> once. Well, I know we want to go to a library. No, we're going right? to the library. Yes. The um, library. Yeah. Uh, a library's good. We want to stop at taverns along the way to see if there's any talk about people disappearing. We saw those people that were being burned. Maybe we hear more rumors about the Punisher, whoever that was. You know, stuff along the way. So it's kind of like a reconnaissance mission on our way south. And then once we get there, maybe we find a temple to Veronius, let you check in. You, you, okay. You, no. you do know how big Waterdeep is, right? Yeah. No. Never been. It's huge. Yeah, no, it's very big. It's like the premier city. Huh. You got Neverwinter, nope. Waterdeep, and yeah. Baldur's Gate. Kara. What? Don't get any idea. I don't know what you're talking about. Prime place to start putting up Yala posters. No. Reaching a little far. You know, I think we'll see what happens when we get there. You know, if Yala is feeling generous, who's going to stop her? Who's Yala? <laughs> Let me tell you about Yala, yes, you know. So, <laughs> she is a goddess next to none, really, truly, on, on a playing field of her own. Uh, she represents abundance and love and harvest, and she really is just all about giving. Look, I I'm... You don't kind of convince me. If you're telling me about a goddess, about love and giving, I'm I'm there. I'm there with you. Yeah. Yep. Don't be surprised if you hear more about her in the days to come. Great. I've missed Antino. Antino's a good NPC. <laughs> it really is. The accent is perfect. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, I just looked back over at the map and realized Miss Pipsy's picture. <laughs> <laughs> there's a corgi face. Yeah, there's a corgi face. Uh, oh, I can put up Antino too. What about me? I want to make about next session being like, hey, we did, we went to see Antino, and if you want to see, don't send any notes to anyone. Yeah, we can definitely kind of touch on that stuff, too. Uh, yeah. How far is water deep from where we are right now? Oh, man. We're oh. far. Oh, man. I, pull, I actually pulled up the Sword Coast map, 
Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's maybe twice as far as it is to Westbridge, but in the other direction, I think. Maybe oh, the a, scale was off, but it's a track for sure. We got horses. Yeah, we got horses. I love that you. I feel like that's like a Nina thing that just keeps coming up. We have horses now. <laughs> so Nina is a horse girl at heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Red Lodge would say something wrong. It's about seven days north of Waterdeep. Oh my god, that's so far. <laughs> so far. We traveled like that far to go to Runedreth Manor from Westbridge. Oh yeah, we did that twice too. Yeah. Well, y'all did that twice. And to go see my granny, who was not really my granny, like that was a whole thing. <laughs> that was a complete fucking waste of time. What? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, Nina. Nina's just a little bitter. She still has yeah. to process. That's that. fair. <laughs> That's fair. You want to ask her how she looks? She'll tell you she's fine. <laughs> ask her about what that happened there. She's <laughs> gonna have a meltdown. <laughs> great, 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 great. Okay, so water deep issues. <laughs> yeah, water deep's about seven days south. Thought you just said north. No, it's it's south of Red Lodge. I'm sorry, it's from Waterdeep. It's about seven oh, days Red to Red Lodge, yeah, north. But it's okay. along the coast. That's why it's called Waterdeep. It's along the coastline. Okay. If you're looking for a place to get lost in, that's the place to be. I gotta remember where my... Because where I'm from isn't that far from Waterdeep. I gotta look at a map again. <laughs> How do I look at a map? Are we just Googling? Yeah, Where here. I will throw you map? on the Faerun map. Thank you. Alright. Okay. And then I... So... Uh, this map is huge. Where yeah. Are yeah. We so, here is Waterdeep. If you scroll out, you can see in the north. I don't know why I'm talking in Antonov's voice still. So. <laughs> in the north, do you see that ping? Yep. That's Waterdeep. No, I didn't see it. Right uh, here. Uh, oh, Rowan, Rowan <laughs> here's you. Yeah, Rowan, you're so far away. I'm so far. So far. <laughs> DM, what fort did I say I was from? Did I ever say? Did I no. say a forest? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Are you just sitting on that until it comes back one day? <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> and if you consider it's a seven-day travel from... Waterdeep to Red Larch, that's this. This yeah. little bitty path right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. It's now, so seven cool. times ten. It's a 70 day trip. You, you could take <laughs> boat. You can absolutely go by boat. boat, which would shorten it significantly. This map is huge. Yeah. yeah this <laughs> This is like the entire world. This is Faerun. Yeah. 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 This is the continent of I Faerun. The first time, the first time Char is seeing a map, and she's like, "What?" Yeah, Antino's like, "Yeah, it's a big fucking place. This doesn't even include the continents on the other side." And you know what's even more mind bending? This is this is just Toral. There are other planets out there, other planes of existence. It's wild. Bananas. <laughs> Bananas bonkers. Says the fey creature from another plane of existence. <laughs> Never liked bananas myself. Kind of gave slight allergy and made my tongue always have bumps on it and such. Just don't like them. We've missed you, Antonel. I've missed all of you. 
Is there a way if I like you mentioned you pay a tithe to the guild? Can I yeah. like leave you a tip or something that is just for you to like build more onto the back? Or... Ah, you don't have to do that. But there's a tip jar right over there. I drop a golden for him. <laughs> Much appreciated. That'll go towards building out uh, the backside a bit. You know, might yeah. might uh, make some stools down here so people have somewhere to sit. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind building out the back, you know, having a actual roof over my head when I sleep. Maybe a little yeah. house for uh, Miss Pipsy, a little dog bed. Maybe a guest room. Who knows, maybe Corbett will actually uh, come down and visit once in a while. I think he will. I think so, too. All right. So, so what are these? Do you know? What are these? Wait, I'm gonna. <gasps> I'm gonna send a message to my father. <gasps> to your dad? Yeah. And then we're gonna catch a boat from Waterdeep. To <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Ignore the calls. No. No, what better way to find hey. out about who you are than to go talk to your dad? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, looking to see perspective of how small the area that we're working in is, forget the cults. Let's just travel. <laughs> Alright. There'll be no consequences. So, Anthony was just sitting there with, like, happily, you know, face on his chin, just like, Oh yeah, we're gonna send no we're gonna send a message to your dad, yeah. We what do you wanna tell him? What are we saying today? Twenty five words, huh? Mm-hmm. It's been years since I've seen the man. <clears throat> I guess it'd be It's Rowan. Hi, Dad. Obviously, I'm still alive. Still following Aronius. I learned what I am. I know the truth about the dock. Did you say the dock? The dock. Okay. With love. And that's it. When you think on your dad, are you thinking of, are you just thinking of dad or are you thinking visual memories of? Oh, visual memory, like, like okay. uh, being at the carpentry with the yeah. and working together, yeah. You hand over the coins and Antino takes them both hands kind of thinks on it almost seemingly like putting a little more care into it knowing like this seems very personal uh you know he's a professional he knows what he's doing and he kind of does this and thinks on it mutters the words and then he <clears throat> reaches forward and places a large hand over yours, Rowan. And not looking at you, but just kind of comfortingly and says, Love you too. Could not be more proud.
Cecile's pregnant. I miss you. And we'll miss you even more. And that's it. And Antona would kind of give you a hand to squeeze and a pat and I know it's hard to you know get get the emotion behind the messages it's when someone else is talking saying it but uh, I can promise you the sincerity They were happy to hear from you. Thank you for that. <clears throat> and I'm gonna like slowly step back. I don't know. Keep backing it up until you can walk outside. Anyone else? Nia considers sending a message to three, but decides not to. Mm -hmm. Out of character, mm -hmm. I know we've done all this talking about going to Waterdeep, and I was just reading back through Flick's letter. That was where she had gone. Mm -hmm. The note says... Uh, what did, I just read it. Hold on. Like, mm -hmm. it's something like, do not, yeah, do not come here seeking vengeance or for further knowledge, for I have included in any notes to discover. So we know that there's cult activity there, mm -hmm. so we could still go. But I also don't know if this was, like, DM's way of, like, being like, you don't need to go to Waterdeep because anything that you would have found there I've given to, like, notes. Um, that being said, we also still have a new goal for Chara to find some stuff about Faith. So just a general reminder to the group mm -hmm. that we did have that and I, we can still go. I'm excited for it, but if we want to change course based on that information. We can sleep on it one more day and see if the fake queen pops up. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm why I'm humming. Now that you're reading that back, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It still yeah. kind of feels worth it to me to travel a little bit and, like, look for signs of the cult activity. What is the term in a book where somebody puts something in there to intentionally lead you astray? Oh, yeah. I... What if the DM put that line in there to seriously lead us astray? <laughs> What if, what if we should go to water deep? <laughs> Which paragraph is it in? Uh, it is the fourth <laughs> paragraph. Top sentence, do not come here seeking vengeance or for further knowledge, for I have included any notes that I have discovered concerning the cults and the beans, Efer and Iaric made mention of, though I do regret to inform you there is very little that I have found. Yefer and Yarek. Yep. Yeah. It would appear that most mention of the Elder Eye has either been removed or redacted for what purpose I have not been able to determine. Was it to hide the Elder Eye's identity, and if so, to protect them or us? I mean, that means that there is still a question of why was it redacted from information in the water. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself is a pretty big question for yeah and Flick did have suspicions that the Black Earth were the ones that um, were spying on them and likely the ones to have killed them so 
Yeah, I mean, I'm still up for, for heading in that direction. We can always change direction if we need to. We don't technically know yet if Flick is dead or not. Is yeah. dead or not. The letter just says, I, you know, assume I am or I am likely. Yeah. If you're reading this, I'm likely dead. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> now we, like, we think about this letter. Maybe we should try to send a message and see what happens. You don't get a see response. If we get, like, if we get like a bounce back. Like a busy signal. Or the fact that we don't hear anything. Yeah. And so then... maybe like Nina is out like reading the letter again that you had given to Lamura and she never gave back to you. <laughs> and she's out there reading it and after you send your message you come out and you're like, Oh, I said should message flick. <laughs> <laughs> Antino's like almost out of spell slots. <laughs> <sighs> well, he has yeah, why not? Just like special guild yeah. privileges. <laughs> yeah. No, like sorcerers can use their points to regain spell slots. I yeah. imagine guild workers have the same sort of al al alchemical power supplies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it could be that I had to walk outside for a minute and then come rushing back in. Like, flick! Yeah. <laughs> What? Where? <laughs> but who wants to do it? Not I. Yeah, says the you box. Were closest with them. What do you want me to s say? We got your, or maybe like, it's Rowan. We got your letter. Please tell me that what you wrote isn't true. Okay. Okay, I can do that. <clears throat> so think about Flick. Uh, probably one of our nights of camping where the super's made in spider pot and we were just spending time. Mm -hmm. um, I click the throwing got your letter. Please tell me it's not true about you. We miss you. Stay safe. And that would take the coins. Um. After a long moment, you'd see his eyes kind of slowly open. He kind of rubbed the coins between his fingers a bit. And he would hand them, just put them back on the desk or the counter. <clears throat> And you've been doing this long enough. Kind of learn the delicate touches of sending magic. And, um, like, for instance, if someone's asleep when you're trying to send a message, you connect, but you can feel the magic, you know, is connecting in more of an open expanse, so to speak, as opposed to a concentrated psyche of someone who's awake, you know? Um, And there's those who who've passed on. Uh, there's 
usually a residual of that soul's fingerprint left behind. Uh, you can usually feel that residual trying to connect with the soul, but obviously it won't. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rowan. I don't... It's not connecting. And you see Antino looks kind of visibly pained by this as well, like... part of this business I hate. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks for trying, though. It was a long shot. <laughs> what knew what she was doing? So you all are headed to water deep then? That's the plan. Alright. Well good luck. Make sure you come back in one piece. I expect to see all of your faces again. Bringing me more coin. And then he just yeah. kind of smiles warmly at all of you. Seriously, though, all of you, be safe. And we'll head out. And I think that's probably where we will end it for tonight. So that we can still allow the other two members to, if they've got anything they wanted to do here, and then also put in some input maybe on mm -hmm. And everything. Flick's letter does at least give us a location. The font of knowledge is likely the largest repository of scrolls and books in the surrounding area. So that seems mm -hmm. like a good place to go. Mm -hmm. Seems promising. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that we're ignoring the don't come here for further. <laughs> it does. It, that feels very on brand. For okay, us. but it yeah. says, but we get, you have to finish the sentence for further knowledge on the cult. Yeah. <laughs> or Elder Eye. <laughs> Has nothing to do with Faye. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So good. Alright. And I guys. still I still think the whole journey down there is gonna hopefully be a little fruitful in terms of stuff and info. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So we are looking at thirteenth of January. Yeah. Yay. Yay. So <laughs> Thank you for the girls' night. Yeah.